Hey everybody, welcome to The Raid, the Gamer Access's World of Warcraft MOBA MMO podcast. I am your host, Bronson Fiore, level 90 prop warrior, joined by... Your level 50 Elza Paladin, Anthony Ta. And joined by our good friend and guest this week... Quinn Kressler, level 90 Death Knight. All right. What kind of Death Knight are you, Morgan? I am a I am a Blood Death Knight, the best kind of Death Knight. I meant race, but okay. <clears throat> oh, race? I'm a Draenei. Okay. For a moment there, I thought you the best I, kind of Death. When well, you said blood, I thought it's like, is it a blood elf? Damn it! Uh, <laughs> oh no! Bags. No. <laughs> uh, I I am a that's blood. That's how long it's been. That's Draenei, how long. Death Knight. Yeah, it's been that long since I last played that game. Uh, yeah. Although, once upon a time, I did have a Blood Elf Death Knight, and I transferred him to into Alliance and made him a Worgen. Um, so, we've all been playing our respective MMOs a lot recently. Yes. I took a little bit of a break to beat Tomb Raider, so I could review it. Uh, that should be going up around the same time as this, actually. Uh, so what have you all been up to? Uh, I'm Gwen, you, what... I guess I guess I'll start. I have been farming for that uh, legendary quest line. I'm on part two, the five point one stuff where you have to go farm a crap ton of rep by killing uh, horde members on the beach. I actually have a better way of doing that for you. Okay. Um, if you go to the Isle of Thunder, all right, into the very center of the map where all those Mogu animators are, yep. just kill them. That- just kill them. That would work if th- that works for the part where you have to kill the Operation uh, Dominance Offensive people. No, no, no. You're you're talking about you're talking about getting rep for the Black Prince, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just go do that. Okay. Well. Uh, yeah, man. That's uh, I, like after spending like maybe an hour and a half there, I got from I think uh, starting to friendly to revered in about an hour and a half. Okay. Uh, and you're a tank, so you basically just gather them all up and beat the crap out of them. Yeah, it's so that's the thing I've known. Like I've been soloing stuff as a tank recently, and it's very much a a war of I'm gonna I'm gonna kill you all, but uh, I but while I kill you all, it's gonna take fucking forever. Mm, you know? I don't have that problem. Well, yeah, death knights don't have that issue. Well, some sometimes, but. As a prop warrior, uh, we don't have a lot of high damage skills, really. So, you know, it's just, like, especially AoE. Especially, it's basically Thunderclap, Cleave, Revenge, Thunderclap, Cleave, Revenge, Victory Rush, and uh, that Dragon ability, uh, Dragon's Roar. Like, it's basically a rotation of those when you're in a big group. And you do Victory Rush to heal yourself. Victory Rush is amazing because you you can uh, <clears throat> you can basically keep yourself alive forever as long as you manage to kill something fast enough. <laughs> nice. Uh, but I've been doing that. Uh, I started a dwarf paladin. Mm-hmm. The best kind of paladin. The, indeed. Uh, Go paladin pal. Built one of the best quest lines in the whole game. Uh, so there's that. Um, not much else really. I mean, I like I keep farming uh, the first three wins of uh, of Siege of Orgrimmar LFR because they all drop uh, a shield, but it never drops, and it's just fucking driving me crazy. Because so all my gear. Except for a couple of pieces, is 500 or higher. Every last bit. Uh, I'm looking at my character right now. The only ones that aren't 500 or higher are chest, legs, shield. And the only ones that aren't 522 or higher are those same ones and a ring. So it's driving me up the fucking wall that the that the the fucking shield doesn't drop because my shield is. The lowest by a wide margin at 476, and it is just like I got this thing from LFR Mogoshan Vaults, and it's mm-hmm. garbage. 
well, now it's garbage. When I first got it, I was super stoked. But, you know, now it's just, like, why would you wear this? At least it's just the shield. Yeah. I, I've because... been having the same problem with a weapon for ever, like, ever since I got back into World of Warcraft, especially for my Death Knight, which I'm still, as I told you earlier, Bronson, I'm still rocking a freaking weapon out of LFR Terrace of the Endless Spring. Yeah, that's that's still better than a shield from fucking Mogish and Vaults. Yeah, I don't know. It's LFR. It's a, it's a four ninety one. Actually, no, it's lower than that. It's a four eighty. Yeah, it's a four eighty. Yeah, my yeah, mine's a four seventy six. So, you know, that's mega garbage because no rep bender gives shields. Like shields, I have found that like the developers just hate giving away good shields. Well. Uh, uh, they don't, they don't right. have to give away anything. Yeah, I know, but like they don't put them at rep benders. They only put them in like two bosses in the whole instance. And it's just like fuck, come on. You know that like, I mean, I remember, and they also have really low drop rates too, which makes it even worse. I remember uh, back in the ICC days, it took me half a year to get Never Ending Winter, that badass ICC shield. Yep, dropped which off. I which I got for my shaman off the first day of running that place for transmog. Yeah, I yeah I got the, that thing. <laughs> I still I have it still actually. So uh, in my That's bank, awesome. it's it's an amazing shield. Um, At least it's just the shield and not a weapon. I I would rather have as a tank. I would rather have a good shield than a good weapon. Mm -hmm. I needed a good that's, weapon, that's, that, because in Final that's Fantasy... That's all you really need, for a warrior and a paladin, that's all you really need is a good shield. In Final Fantasy XIV, hanging on to your aggro, especially when you've got, like, seven other people doing ridiculous DPS numbers, you need damage to keep aggro. So I had to go for about, mm, What was it? Two months? Three months? With a really mediocre shield, because uh, the item level on the the relic sword, which is like the second or third best depending, is like an item level eighty or ninety. The sword I had was like item level sixty. Hey man, we did vanilla WoW. We all know we all know what that fun shit is like. Oh yeah, uh, going months so, without yes. an upgrade. Yeah, you would. Oh, so oh, it was quite hey. a. Busy. Do, do you remember when rep gear didn't exist? And it's like, oh, it didn't yep. drop. It oh, it sucks for you. Yeah, you know, like the that's only... Final Fantasy fourteen right now because let's see, there's this one particular boss trial that I run that I ran a million times before they patched it. Um, ran it like fifty or seventy times. The sword only dropped once, but there was another paladin, so he took it. Yeah, and people would be, mm -hmm. and whenever I was getting into the higher level boss fights to get, you know, my relic for my relic sword quest, they were people were just coming up to me and just saying, "It's like, dude, your gear and your armor is awesome, but your sword." And I'm just like, "Well, that's what happens when you have shitty item drop rates." Well, yeah, I mean that happened. I remember back in Vanilla WoW, like just you could you could literally spend an entire fucking month. Like, two okay, so months on a piece. Just a piece. You know? And, I, you know, Quinn and I played Alliance at the time. Hey, Quinn, you remember this? Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, Shaman Gear dropped, everyone. Oh! <laughs> oh, no. God. Well, it, was, it, it wasn't remember, that bad. But... I remember there was a guy, like, one of my uh, one of my first guild masters when I first started, his name is Crestus. I don't know where the hell he is now, but he was a great guy. Every time a piece of shaman gear would drop in molten core, he would just flip right the fuck out. This poor guy. I, I mean, I can't blame him. I, I you know I can't because it was like that was something that they really didn't think of. Of like, man, maybe we should prioritize this. So if your alliance just shaman gear never drops, like that, like they really couldn't do that. Like, that's something that was you not possible. Have to, you have to realize that MMOs hadn't exactly progressed to the point where they're exactly 100% you know, this... bulletproof out the door. Oh, the, WoW was certainly not. I remember, like, the PvP... Every, first off, uh, when the game first came out, every server was a PvP server. Right. So... <laughs> that... so You're just walking along, questing, minding your own business, and then all of a sudden, this 
fucking schmuck with a bear. At least, you know, like this some some it's always some hunter comes rogue, up and just rogue. shoots you square in the face. Hunters and rogues. Hunters and rogues. It's always one of the two. It's never a warrior, it's never a warlock. Because those motherfuckers just leave you alone nine times out of ten. But if it's a rogue or a hunter, they have absolutely 100% confidence in themselves that they can drop you in less than a second. And they fucking do. Yeah, it, well, especially because, first off, it was the worst in Stranglethorn Vale. Because yep. they knew, and you knew, that there were only two graveyards, and it's one of the biggest zones in the entire fucking game. So basically, all that you could do, is, and there were, in the case of a rogue, there were tons of places to hide. To just jump out at you and surprise, butt sex. You know, just, oh, God. Yeah. You know, just the walk to Booty Bay was hell. It was living hell. Good times. Uh, what was it? You know, like, what else was not super great? Uh, Booty uh, Bay. F- hmm. God. Oh, yeah. Uh, the fact that back then in neutral towns, you could actually still kill people, and the guards wouldn't really do anything. That that was that was dumb. Booty Bay. That mm-hmm. Booty Bay that, was now now if like nowadays in any neutral town, God forbid you lay a finger on another guy, you're dead in less than a second. Which really gets rid of the whole bar fight factor that some of that. Right. <laughs> that's that's what made Booty Bay so fun, though. Booty Bay was just one giant bar fight, to be honest. It, it still is, kind of. Yeah, because that city, I think they do let you kill each other still. I'm not sure. Uh, well, there's always those people that are trying to get their insane. Oh, uh, yeah. Team. So, they're all, like, instead of picking fights with other people, they're picking fights with everybody. Guards, other players, and just stupid shit. Oh man, that was, yeah. Um, a tune. I have yet to. I'm still debating on whether or not I want to do that, but I'm already falling behind on my gear and my legendary quests. I'm not even sure if I'm if I'm going to be able to complete that legendary quest on two characters or three I, characters rather. I'm surprised if I'll get it done on one. I'll be happy if I get it done on my warrior because that thing is item level 608, and man, like that thing is going to be useful leveling in the next expansion. Like that thing is ridiculous. Um, but Ooh, yeah, level six oh eight. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. it's all about right. exponentially bigger numbers. The, you, that's these are why I'm a Moser. Item level nine hundred. Actually, I, 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 I fancy really for it. In in uh, well, no, they're doing an item squish in the next expansion, so shit's actually gonna go down. Like the actual numbers are gonna go down. You're still gonna be just as strong though. Which I guess is smart in a way. In FF14, uh, with the patch that they introduced the item level counter, it actually can read up into the thousands. So I don't know if <laughs> they're planning. I foresee to... item level 9,000 and over. Oh, please make that happen. 9,001. But I think that's like 10 years down the line, though. And by that point, we most people probably have moved on. <laughs> You would think that, but people are still playing Final Fantasy XI. So people I mean, are still playing EverQuest One, like the five thousand of them, I think. Uh, EverQuest One. There's like, and then there's like the small group of middle schoolers still playing RuneScape. There's uh, actually RuneScape Maple Two. Maple Story. Now. Do anybody remember Maple Story? Yes. What the fuck is a Maple Story? Oh it's like my a God. sprite. It's like a sprite-based side scroller MMO with so with retarded QT, as hell. With QT. Oh pixel yeah, art. it was dumb. It was dumb. So retarded as hell. I don't know. If you were a middle school teenage girl, probably seemed cool. Which I last know. I checked, I'm not. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh man, I I did not know this. I, um, I, I know, right? It's a shocking revelation. I am learning things about our friendship all these years later. <laughs> mm-hmm. RuneScape. Um, there's RuneScape two now, I think. So, RuneScape, oh. the not so good sequel. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. RuneScape was like the, not, the, the not free, well improved sequel. It's like, believe it or not, RuneScape. I uh, I don't remember what was my first ever MMO, but RuneScape was one of the first two that I played. <sighs> Mainly because everyone in middle school was telling me it's free. You can sign up, and what I actually did the whole time was I wasn't exactly questing in the normal sense because I had no idea where to go. But I was spending my entire life just cutting down trees for money. I'm just like, this doesn't seem very fun. So I stopped. In addition to that, it looked a bit worse than a Nintendo 64 game. Because it ran on a web browser. 
I I remember that I like my first two MMOs. I both played on friends and cousins like PCs, which were Lineage Two and EQ. And then WoW happened, and fucking that's that's when the crippling addiction started. Yeah, the and that's other, when it, and that's when it will stay forever and ever and ever until other, something better comes out, which hasn't happened yet. Ten years later. Yeah, it's going to be ten. It's we're on the ten year anniversary, and it is still like this. You know, like people say, oh, it's lost subs. It's lost subs. Like, yeah, it has. Like, it's yeah, lost. it has. But it's still the said. best MMO on the fucking market. So I've, al- I've always that, said, bitches. I've always said it. It's just like. Oh, it's because the game sucks. Actually, it's not because no. the game sucks. The, the everyone want, everyone keeps t- every time I talk to people about why World of Warcraft loses subscription numbers, they always talk about the one reason it loses subscription numbers. And I always think to myself, it's not one reason. It's many, many, many factors. Uh, first off, you got veterans that are extremely pissed off because everything is not super duper ultra hard. So you know, the only the elitist twenty can ever finish. Uh, it's old. Uh, people have moved on. People have grown up. People have more real life responsibilities. You know, it's a lot of it's a lot of reasons. I mean, in addition what? to that, increased competition. Like when World of Warcraft came out, there was like what Ragnarok Online, which oh, not many people played. There's Fantasy Star, but that didn't wasn't really around. There was EverQuest, but that, that, it wasn't that great in the West anyway. Yeah, and you look at MMOs today. Everyone wants to make an MMO. You got Final Fantasy XIV, Guild Wars Two, Elder Scrolls Online is coming out too. DC Universe, Star Wars: The Old Republic. You have all of these big competitive, well, at least big budget competitors. I keep hearing just sh- garbage about Elder Scrolls. Like just that's that's what I keep hearing as well. Which and I I know I know a guy who uh, works in my motor pool who went and actually signed on for the beta, got the actual game. Or the actual game beta, like most the most alpha version of whatever the hell they put out, and basically uninstalled it like three hours later. I know that like press outlets are finally allowed to talk about it. The Escapist did an article on it. Screw Attack video did a video on it, and just it's on the beta. On the beta, yeah, they're finally allowed to talk about it. The press is. I'm not sure if regular. Which I guess are we, we allowed to talk about it? I don't know, so don't don't <laughs> yeah. That's a done. Um, I I don't know, so we can't make let, any speculations. Let, let's at all. Uh, let's okay. Then I won't say anything. Yeah, I was about to say like Anthony for, for our safety. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. That's the thing. So I'm not gonna be like yo, Anthony. Talk. We about- don't know. Yeah, like yeah, I can tell you what other people have told me and what Screw Attack seemed to, opinion of it was, which, you know, no one seems to be that into it. But yeah, you know, you never know. I mean, yeah, the the general opinion of WoW before it came out is it had the potential to be the next big thing, and it blew like it blew up huge. But you know, like I know, like by the only people who really enjoyed the ESO. Uh, beta have been the really hardcore Elder Scrolls fans. Which, you know, good for them. Which, yeah, like, I'm not gonna stop you from enjoying that. Go, Even go. then, though, I don't know. Yeah, well... But me being the biased you probably wizard, have to be. You probably have to be a know, very... <laughs> Quinn, and, Quinn I and I being Blizzard fanboys. Uh, but no, I mean, like, I'm open to another MMO. It's just, it, it has to be Bet like it has to be better than WoW and do things that are like fresh. If they have and... they put into the trailers any indication, I don't want to play it. Now, <laughs> if if they came out, if uh, THQ and Games Workshop all the, like a couple of years back, if they actually went ahead and created uh, and went through the creation of Warhammer on Warhammer Forty Thousand Online, I'd probably drop WoW right off the bat and go play that. But I, they didn't. I th- well, not only that. I mean, it, like I like I said, it's going to be for me, and I think for a lot of people, it's going to be very dependent on like the the actual. Uh... Oh, mm-hmm. Yep. Definitely. Finished yeah. Sorry. There. Yeah. You, you totally <laughs> right. lost your train of thought there, dude. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's totally. It's really dependent on like the overall quality of the game. I find that a little hard to believe, if I'm honest. Just but, well, just, I mean, like it, I look, I look at screenshots of Elder Scrolls Online. It's like 
it sort of looks like Elder Scrolls, but there isn't any color. Uh, especially yeah, it looks brown and gray as fuck. I mean, I looked at the screenshots back when the game was first announced, and I thought to myself, okay, the buildings sort of look like Elder, Elder Scrolls buildings, but everything is covered in this... I didn't think this was a possible in a modern game, but it had that Dragon Age Origins effect, which... Uh, in, Dragon Age or- in Dragon Age Origins on the game systems on the Xbox 360, uh, it was everything was just in this muddled brown because it was a PC game that a different developer ported to the consoles and didn't exactly do the best job, so everything was just muddled. Everything was just covered in brown and you had styrofoam trees, and the pictures of, of ESO just reminded me of that. I'm like, I don't want to go back to brown. Brown, 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 ever. It's Ew. it's so dull. I mean, maybe in Gears of War it was tolerable, but that was because you were busy headshotting everything with blood gushing everywhere. But in a game uh, like, not to in a to game mention, like it was this, early Unreal Engine, so they, they had they kind of had an excuse. Like in yeah. MMOs, aesthetic matters because you. I mean, how much time do you spend staring at fucking scenery in these games? Like so much. You know, right so, now I am just walking around the same circle, mining. For Iron, kind of nice to have a pretty looking game, so I'm not as bored. I, I Even mean, though I'm walking in the same circle for like yeah, the like fifteenth pa- time now mining. Like Pandaria had gorgeous art, and it had that, and it had a re- its own vibe. So I was very, and same thing with every expansion. So it's so like yeah, I mean, I look at ESO, and I'm just like this does, like this just looked brown and unappealing and. Why like why would you play this? Like I would get why you play DCOU. I play if it. the gameplay is good enough, it could make up for it because in Dragon Age Origins, yeah, everything was covered in brown, but at least it was uh, you were there for the great storytelling, um, and if you could tolerate the gameplay, you know, it's got some cool things going for it. So it kind of made up for it. It was just one of those things I, in which you have to look past the iffy looks. I feel asleep playing uh, Dragon Age Origins, and I feel bad. Because I know how good of a game that, that game story is, but the game's it's not bad. It's bad. Yeah, you know, so you know a game. You know a game is me, boring as shit when you fall asleep in the middle of playing it. <laughs> Final Fantasy Thirteen. <laughs> that actually, I didn't. That, I didn't think. I'm okay. gonna be honest. That actually used to happen to me. Uh, that actually happened to me a couple times when I used to work for my grandfather because my grandfather, uh, you know, he you work hard on the farm. So you go home and play a game, and I'm just I'm in the middle of a Gears of War three match, and you know, just out cold. Mm. Um, I thought the Dragon Age Origins gameplay was okay, but it wasn't particularly good because the PC version it basically was an overhead view with lots of micromanaging. Uh, from mm. what little I saw of it, but with the consoles, the separate developer tried to change it to more of an action RPG kind of viewpoint, which didn't work as well. They didn't Dragon Age Two; they just went all out action RPG. So the PC version of Dragon Age Two played like a really clumsy, played like a somewhat clumsy World of Warcraft. So yeah. I, so I play. So my primary memory with Dragon Age was that the game scored really well, and it like uh, got all this hype. And I normally don't like Western RPGs. I find them boring and stupid most of the time. Uh, but I was I was like, you know what? This game has a lot of hype behind it. I'll give it a shot. And I and I play, you know, I uh, got the game and a buy two get one. And I started it up and like I liked the character creator. I was really engrossed in the story. I thought the gameplay was garbage. And then the then I did, uh, Anthony was talking about that mage tower. Yeah, I hated questing inside that dream thing. Oh, It was that- like, I got lost the first time, and I actually had no idea what to do until I realized, oh, you are supposed to get stuck, backtrack, and go to a different realm so you can find the tools to go for, and th- it was just terrible, because you had no idea. Yeah, and like, then, well, and then I did proceed to do the quest where you have to, where, like, uh, what was it? You know the one I'm talking about, Anthony. It's the you have to find the Earl, right? The Earl got sick. The Earl got sick, and you have Yo, to help him. Got to go hunt this thing. Yeah, like it's just like, <laughs> like I save the fucking kingdom, and I do all this shit, and they're like, uh, yeah, bro. Oh, but the Earl has the flu. Go get the cure. 
And I was we'll just, be right here. He's got a flu we've never seen before, so you need to walk all the way to the other side of the earth to and get that, the cure. And, and that's when I was just like, I'm done with this game. Peace out. I was okay with it. I can, I can imagine again, the, I'm the apothecary... Okay. I can imagine the royal apothecary coming out to the, you know, coming out to the player. Uh, I've never gotten this far into the game, but I'm afraid the Earl has gone to her flu. You great. need to travel. You need to travel all the way over, all the way across the land of whatever fuck realm this is, and retrieve a couple of berries that only grow in this particular area on this particular particular plant on this that particular time pretty, of year. That sounds pretty standard. Oh, speaking this, of which, Fan um, did a pretty hilarious joke, except it was the Final Fantasy version. It was like, dude, right. the king could die nine more times today and be totally fine because I just need to go two, two maps over and buy a lot of Phoenix down. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I think that was actually a Bravely Default comic they just did. Either way. Oh. Um, that game is supposed to be really good, but this isn't the Gamecast. We're going to talk about MMOs. Um, if you want to be on the Gamecast, we do that uh, tomorrow. How much death sickness do you have to have being a adventurer, as they call an FF14, or as however they call adventurers in Warcraft? Like, you could die eight times, get back on your feet, and die again. The life of a person saving the realm. And you don't get paid very much doing it either. No. <laughs> nope. You pay nope, garbage. It's dog shit. Like, I, I, get, I, get a, a, I get more money selling buzzard asses to the fucking arms. I get more money selling buzzard asses to the fucking blacksmith and then use like maybe 1% of those buzzard asses profits to repair my armor. And then I go out and do it all over again. All right, everyone. Sorry about that little break there. Uh, Quinn had something going on in his home. He is in the military. I so, so we kind of had to be like, oh man. Yeah, it was uh, it was more of a unit cohesion sort of deal, but anyway, it's irrelevant. Yep. Uh, Opsec, so, Opsec dictates I don't talk about it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, <clears throat> so we're right now we're all uh, playing Amosa. So other than like get, getting my warrior ready, like I said, I've been leveling my death knight a little bit, but man, I just. I am. I do not get enjoyment out of playing a Death Knight anymore. Just I. I don't know. Just something about it doesn't click. Too easy. Mm -hmm. I. I think that's part of it. Like, it, like I mean, I thought Mage was fucking easy mode, but then it's like, oh yeah, you do a shit ton of damage and you wear plate armor. It's just like, oh fuck. All right. Not as much damage as some Fury Warriors I've seen. Well, yeah, but. I mean, if you're, I've seen a Fury Warrior pot, like just basically shit out four hundred damage, like four hundred thousand damage per second. That sounds fucking insane. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, but not unheard of. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like that's so. I also started working on that Pandaria Lore Master, mm -hmm. and I only have two more zones to go. Town Long Steps, which I'm dreading, and <sighs> uh, the yeah. And the second half of uh, Karasang Wilds. Uh, I haven't even seen Karasang Wilds yet. It's it's kind of cool. I like the name for the achievement. Uh, the the Karasang achievement is Mighty Roman uh, cr uh, Crass Arranger. Nice. And then no nothing is ever going to be uh, the Northrend questing one on Grizzly Hills. For grizzle, my shizzle. Uh huh. Oh god. Oh, shit, I remember that. <laughs> it was a cool zone too. Grizzly Hills was rad. No, I I really like Northrend. Northrend is probably my. Northrend was probably the like next to Pandaria. It's probably one of the most thought out and well designed zone like continents. Yeah, I Outland. As much as I like Outland, it was a little bland. Yeah, like the, of course well, my my favorite zone being Nether. Uh, you know, Netherstorm and uh, Zangermarsh. I fucking hate Zangermarsh. I, I, I and like I, And can I can I just go ahead and state that how stoked I am to see Draenor in its prime? That is going to be cool. I think I am really excited to see Shadowmoon Valley. That's a, mm -hmm. That is going to be super rad. 
uh, Shadow Moon Valley and Blades Edge Mountains before they became the Blades Edge Mountains. Yeah, and also uh, it, the southern half of Terracar has Arakoa spires, and the Arakoa aren't, aren't like grounded anymore; they can fly. Yeah, how fucking nuts is that? That's cool as shit. Um. So yeah, that's I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Quinn, what have you been up to? I guess. Well, um. I, ever since uh, coming back to World of Warcraft, I've been trying to catch up uh, as best I could. Uh, I, I, you know, for those of you who don't know, I actually do play the Holy Trinity. I play a tank, a ranged DPS, and a healer. I don't and play I've, No, thank you. Yeah, but um, my like my core, my core three are my Blood Knight, my Blood Death Knight tank, whom I'm actually playing right now. Uh, I've been trying to get her. Because it's a female Draenei, because you know sexiness. Uh, I've been uh, trying to get, uh huh, uh-huh, yeah, rock the hooves, baby. Nah, but I've been trying to get her caught up on uh, on gear. So I've been running a shitload of Siege of Orgrimmar, while at the exact same time trying to catch up on my legendary quest line and just trying to trying to do a lot of transmogrification sets, because that's one of the things I absolutely love to do in this game now since they introduced it. And uh, I have a certain add-on called Mogget, which has the entire uh, armor database in one itty-bitty mod, and you just build sets, and then you go out and farm them. So what I've been trying to do right now is I've been trying to build a set based around the Enchanted Thorium uh, breastplate and leggings, and uh, to finish the set, I was going to farm the... um, the plate shoulders from Supremus out of uh, Black Temple. I can't remember what they're called, but uh, and I'm not even going to bother looking them up. And to finish off the set, I was going to farm for the Battered Hilt, which drops in the uh, Ice Crown Citadel Five Mans. So I've just been running heroic mode of, of those three dungeons every day for the past you, week. You know, in Wrath of the Lich King, I killed the Lich King. I was in a 10-man raid guild that killed the Lich King. I got most of the way through 25, man. I did a little bit of Heroic, but I never finished Heroic Halls of Reflection. Seriously? Yeah, I just kept... I finished. I finished Heroic Halls of Reflection in like 20 minutes. The, well, I kept getting fucking the most retarded groups ever who couldn't... And also, I hated the first half of that dungeon. I know. Because they... Cause, it's, it's Black Morass all over again. Well, not only that, like Black Morass is... Was at least uh, entertaining. Was at least entertaining, but this is like you literally have to stand in a corner so you can line of sight. Line of sight, all these mobs, and then kill them in a corner. Yeah. That's, which, not, that's not fun. No, it was that was horrible. I like the fact that they did bring back the commanders from Warcraft 3. Right, and but, then the whole shpick with uh, Jaina and uh, Uther and, and, you know. Yeah, and if you're Horde, Sylvanas, which, whatever. Um, but no, that was... That was such a cool that like the second half of that instance is awesome though. The Lich Where King run. you're running from the Lich King. If the Lich King is chasing you, he wants you dead in the worst possible way. Yeah. So he like summons these gigantic walls of ice that Jaina has to break down while you fight off hordes of undead scourge. It, okay. And not to mention you have a time limit. you got to do it in less than six minutes. You know, I really love scenarios. They're really cool. They have some good story stuff to them. Like They, they are definitely a great piece of gameplay. Uh, but great piece of lore. And lore. Like, they're fun gameplay, though, also. But I do miss having more five bands because, yeah. uh, you know... The, the Mists of Pandaria had the five mans that came with it, and then they made uh, Heroic Scalamans, which, okay. And then... Yeah, that's that's fine. And then they made... Um, and uh, then they redid the entire Scarlet... Uh, set. Yeah, yeah. So, so they did all of Scarlet, which... Monastery. I wanted to say Chapel, but mo- no, it's Monastery. Yeah, which... I, Scarlet was always one of my favorite dungeons. I really enjoyed the Cataclysm Scarlet, where uh, they had... the Where the dude's like, oh man, this, the Scarlet Crusade has gone against what it was all about. And then he proceeds to go crazier and crazier until he's dancing naked in the fountain. That was uh, really... When the fuck did this happen? D- dude, did you never level a character through, catacly- through uh, Cataclysm and do Scarlet? 
Uh, I, yeah, I leveled my uh, my dwarf paladin, but I don't remember anything like that. Oh, yeah, no, it's nuts. Like the quest at the beginning is like, oh, we gotta fight the Scarlet Crusade. Cause you know he was a member of the Scarlet Crusade, and he was like, oh man, they they've gone rogue. They're fucking horrible now. This was about fighting the undead. Now it's just this weird other thing. They're insane. And then he proceeds to go crazier and crazier until you get to the uh, church in which he is dancing in his underwear in the fountain. Huh. I'm not sh- like I'm not sure if they did they change. I'm gonna go find this out later, but I wonder if they changed the uh, five the regular level thirty version to the new one, or they just. Kept I it. think they did. Ah, uh, that sucks. Man, that was awesome. Like that was one of my favorite parts about Cataclysm was that zone. Or that particular redone dungeon. Mm. I always or maybe, or maybe it is. Uh, maybe maybe it is still that way, like level thirty wise. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna be leveling a new. I'm, I want to level a new character soon. I just I'm having trouble picking out what it, what I want it to be. Like I've been thinking about a dwarf hunter. I've been thinking about a uh, night elf priest. Uh, I, I've, I've had a different bunch of different ideas. See, what I want to do eventually is I want to level another healer, mm-hmm. but I want to level like a really hard like I want to level either uh, my paladin and make him a healer instead of a tank because paladin tanks are not that great. Yeah, at no, least not, uh, at least not anymore. It's weird how that flipped around, right? Like, it, it right, because to... death, like blood death knights, are like the star tank of this expansion. It's the same thing with the warlocks, where the warlocks were like the most, and they still are the most badass, overpowered fucking thing. And I think co- going into you know warlords of Draenor, the warlocks are gonna be the most unchanged. I I think that um I know Cataclysm warriors got a huge buff and they got nerfed for. For uh, you know, they got nerfed for Pandaria, though they're still strong. Like I think we're second banana to Death Knights, but we're still one of the preferred tanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's because your single target threat output is still unmatched. Yeah, and that's kind of always been our thing. I remember in Wrath, and really everything before Wrath, our AO like I was so mad. I always hated fucking Paladins and Death Knights had Consecration and uh, Death and Decay. Like, mm-hmm. I, I fucking hated you fuckers for that, because... And we don't even... It's gotten to a point now where Death Knights don't even need Death and Decay. Death and Decay right now is the ascent, is basically the initial pull and just, you know, extra damage. Our main threat, our main source of threat comes from our Death Strike, our Rune Strike, and our Disease Ticks. Yeah, which... Which, you know may not initially have a whole lot of threat gen but over time it's ridiculous which yeah like that's like the highest the highest uh, threat like the highest threat generating ability i have is you know death strike for two reasons one it hits like a truck two it causes healing no well not only that but here's the thing you have to remember though is like you guys had those aoe abilities that and those AOE, and those things continuously do damage Mm-hmm. So you're always gaining some threat from them until they wear off. Warriors, we had one AOE ability really that was that you could use in defensive stance, which was thunderclap. Uh, thunderclap, and it was only a one-time thing. So everyone like would bitch like, "Oh man, warriors suck ass at AOE tanking." Well, yeah, because we don't have any ability to fucking AOE tank. And I remember, I remember in Burning Crusade where paladins were like the go-to tank. Well, yeah, it's like the, like you wanted a warrior to be your MT for a couple of fights. I know Illidan was one of them because he had something that needed to be shield blocked. Like yeah. that was the only way you could do it. Just like how Illidan also had something that needed to be warlock tanked, which was hilarious. Yep. Um, I always enjoy stuff like that where it's like let's put a let's make a clothy a tank for this one section. Um. Yeah. So I don't know, man. It's yeah, I. So you've been doing that, Anthony. T- tell us about Final Fantasy XIV. Um. What are you doing? Well, uh, at this point, I'm actually kind of running out of things to do, which is amazing. You should. You should <laughs> it's you should, shock. It's a shocker, if I'm honest. 
I'm running out of things to do. Because uh, basically what I did was I did some more hard mode dungeon runs, or the harder dungeons at least, try to clear up my checklist and backlog of things I need to do. Basically all I have left is now this uh, one four-man dungeon called Pharaoh Sirius, which basically you're scaling up a lighthouse that's been infested with a lot of uh, uh, zombies and corrupted crystals that if you uh, if you get too many stacks of it, it, it blows up on you. Oh. And I heard that's pretty hard, so I haven't exactly ran that yet, just to, you know, prepare, overgear myself before heading in there. You are not prepared. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I remember one time that I sat down on the day in a class to take a really hard test, and the thing was is that about a night or two ago, uh, we ran uh, Black Temple. You remember that, Bronson? Yes, I do. Yeah, basically blazed through it. That was really cool. The problem was is that this exam was to be extremely hard, and I was just sitting there, and as I was take and just as just before the exam was going to happen, it's like Elizabeth was like screaming in my head, "You are not prepared!" And I'm just like, sitting at the gate. Oh damn it, I'm not. <laughs> um, <laughs> Such a demotivator. But so uh, I have a four man dungeon, and then I also have this colossal raid. It's called the. Um, uh, oh, crap. Coil of Bahamut. Bahamut is basically that, in the story, Bahamut was that giant thing that erupted from a descending moon and basically uh, kind of laid waste to just about everything. So he's like Deathwing. He's like Deathwing, except uh, it's a moon. He, he, so he's that, he, so he's he that calls, monster in the opening cinematic, dude. Yeah. The giant, I have not they, seen they, this game's opening cinematic. You understand? I, you should. All right. It's kind of Because cool. it is a doozy. It okay, is a doozy. Like Deathwing, he kind of caused <laughs> destruction over time by flying everywhere, going roar, and then the ground split open, whereas this is a giant moon that just erupted. So everything just got slammed at once. So that basically, the coil of Bahamut, I think, is involving eventually being that guy. There's five turns to it. And once you get loot from it, I don't think you can run it again for the rest of the run, get loot from it again for the rest of the week. That's so for everybody, it's like one of their absolute go-tos on Monday is go do it. Now, I haven't done it yet because I couldn't even pass turn one because apparently I'm a shitty tank and can't get aggro on a newly spawned uh, ad. Yeah. So that was quite embarrassing, so I'm kind of taking a break from that for a long time. I get, You know, I really hate people who get really pissy when it's your first time tanking something. They're like, you didn't pick up the ad. Well, yeah, you told me ad spawn. You didn't tell me where they spawn from. Well, the problem so is I don't that know where to look at all. Thanks. The problem I had was is that um, this basically you're fighting a snake, but the all thing right. is, is that about I, I think about uh, a third to half health left, the snake suddenly splits into two. So the main tank has to move the snake to one end of the stage. Whereas while the off tank has to grab aggro on this new one before the healers get too much aggro trying to heal the main tank because the main tank gets hit extremely hard during this entire fight. So this entire fight in general is extremely stressful in the tanks. The problem was is that the first time I completely missed it because it's, it, it isn't like it does some flashy big, look, look, the snake is splitting. It didn't do any of that. So the it, first, just, it just does it. It just right. does it out of nowhere, and you don't get yep. a good indicator, so you have to be very alert. Like, maybe you have a indicator and saying there's now two enemies on the on the aggro list instead of one. But even then, it's very easy to miss. So the first time, I missed it completely, and we wiped. The second time, I targeted the wrong snake because they both looked identical. And I apparently wasn't checking my aggro. So basically, we wiped enough times, and then and we had some random people in our group, so they all were just like, yeah, I'm going to go do other things. And so the whole group just disbanded. So that didn't really give me much confidence going forward. Um, Don't you hate it when that happens? Uh, so uh, here's the thing as a tank that bothers me, and I think we've all tanked here, so we know this. I hate when it's your first time doing a fight in a 25-man, or back in the day, a 40-man, and they get pissed that you miss picking up an ad... Because you you know you just don't know where it spawns and it gets caught in the clusterfuck that is a raid. Yep. Like it's just it happens. People chill out. It was my first time. It, I know especially where it spawns it's I I I love it when people get pissed off, especially in LFR. You know, because me being a death knight, 
that has never tanked uh, Siege of Orgrimmar before. And I'm always, you know, and I'm always like, hey, yo, new tank here. Uh, can yeah, somebody no, give you, me the skinny? You tell them, and then they sit there and just aggro the boss. Like, the other tank will aggro the boss, or some DPS will, and it's just like... And then they get pissed. Like, they're like, oh, you should have read online, or you should have watched online. It's like... You should have, oh, yeah. You should, okay. You should have... Okay, first like, off, oh, here's, oh, the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay, I tank. I watch some videos, especially on the harder stuff, right? But here's the thing. It's like reading a book on driving. You can read a book on driving all you want. You can watch as many videos on driving as all you want. But when you get into a real car, you can still suck at driving, even though you read the exactly. book a billion times. Because exactly. you do, because you may have the knowledge on how to drive, but you don't have the experience to drive yet. Same analogy. Okay, I can watch videos all I want. I watch the video many times. I'm like, oh, okay, this is where I need to place it. I need to replace this. But in the heat of the moment, when you are not familiar with the flow, because that's what videos don't really tell you is how things flow, um, you're going to forget some details. Not only like, that. There was this one giant boss fight, uh, Ultima Hard Mode. Okay, I watched the video on that like maybe three times. Thing was is that I kept forgetting to hit the limit break to give the entire party extra protection so that we all don't wipe at that one critical moment. The first time I completely forgot to hit the button because I was so focused on, uh, on uh, other things. And the second time I hit it way too early and then everyone just gave up. See the third you know, time I the third time with a different group I got it, so yeah, yeah. So it like in my case, why it pisses me off in LFR is like even if I didn't watch the video, it's like motherfucker, it's LFR. No LFR is mechanic is too difficult to explain or too fucking hard to where you need to tell me to go watch the video. You just need to tell me turn off on three stacks, don't stand in shit. You know. And, and, uh, Believe it or not, people have, like, the hardest fucking time explaining that particular detail. Like, I can, like, let's let's do LFR Garrush, because he is the hardest fight in the place. Okay, mm -hmm. there are these two giant fucking wheels that spawn. Some DPS needs to break off and kill those. There's going to be a weapon where, a like, this AoE damage comes out of it. You, they need to kill that before killing Garrush. Add spawn, same concept. Tanks... One of you needs to grab ads, one of you needs to grab Garish. Oh shit, was that hard? So, yeah, I mean, people have like the hardest time explaining the simplest fucking, you know, mechanic. Like, you know, when it comes to when it comes to Siege of Orgrimmar, <laughs> when it comes to Siege of Orgrimmar, especially like with 90% of the bosses in that place, you have to talk like the tanks need to swap, you know, aggression on the boss at a certain, you know, number. The magic number I found being 4. Three or four. Depends on the fight. But yes. Yep. Yeah, like, so, okay, great. Taunt, like, taunt off of the boss at four stacks. Perfect. I got it. No problem. But there's always that one asshole that's like, you should have fucking, you know, you should have watched the fight on Fat Boss or Tank, you know, Tank Spot or something. Oh, like yeah. Motherfucker. Uh, sure. I can sure. watch. Like I said, I can watch that doesn't all I count. want. I can watch all I want on how to drive. And I can that still, and, I, and guess what? I still sucked at driving for for a number of years. Okay, experience is kind of nice too. Actually, another type of um, person that kind of isn't really encouraging, to say the least, is um, it's not that hard to understand. It's easy. Okay, first off, it's easy because you have done it a billion times. When you do anything a billion times, you know the pattern, you know every single little detail. Yes, of course it seems easy to you because you did it a billion times. I'm going to be and honest. And therefore, I know everything about it. Whereas the person who's new doesn't know the pattern to the whole thing. Once we start getting the retard strength buff, that's when I become that guy. Huh. For the Quinn, you have you become? I'm not sure if you've been in enough bad LFRs to experience retard. Oh strength God, I I have been in so many fucking bad LFRs, but I didn't want to leave because I needed this particular boss. Well, you yeah, always run it. You always run into that particular situation. No, I, I was in it last night where we didn't wipe. We don't. We didn't wipe on either boss. It's just the DPS was so shit. Like it was so bad. So that, just, that was another. That was another was concern forever. too. That's like another concern too. That I kind of have every time I go into these big. Um, this is especially uh, uh, prominent throughout the relic quest trials. So basically, in, in Final Fantasy XIV, to get the 
third best, which you can upgrade to the second best weapon in the game that's specific to your class and looks totally cool, you had to embark on a really long, uh, tedious, well, I'm going to say tedious, um, well, it could be, a relic quest in which you have to collect items, uh, go through all these hard mode trials, and to get, you know, one of the best weapons that you can get for your class today. The problem is, is that a lot of people kind of jump into it a little undergeared. Now, this isn't so bad when you're talking about, say, the Chimera fight or the Hydra fight, because those are kind of more um, know the strategy, understand the strategy, or have some people carry you kind of things, you know, to make it through. You freed hard, and then, but then of course you get to the three hardest parts, which is you free Garuda and uh, Titan. You free is like the the Fire Lord. Um, that fight used to be very easy, but then Square Enix patched it to make it really annoying, so I don't like it anymore. Garuda is just hard, but it's the kind of oh, it's acceptable hard. We just need to they just need to get details. And then there's Titan. I'm pretty sure anybody who has gone through Titan hard mode um, either finds it okay or absolutely hates it. And the reason why people hate it is because um, you probably will wipe at Titan 20 or 30 times before you can pass it. Why? So because there is so much AoE going on that all the DPS and the healers have to be extremely good at dodging or else they can get hit for massive damage and for this one particular attack can get knocked out of the ring. So you got people that you so you have to account for that brief moment of lag because even though it might look like you're out, you might not be out according to the server. So and that's the part where people screw up a lot. In addition to maybe not being to dodge that good, which I understand because I'm terrible at dodging, uh, people dodge. also go into it, and people also go into it slightly undergeared. So if you do get hit, you'll lose so much health that you could get one shot it at the later parts, or uh, you lose so much health the healers can't get you back up on your feet in time. So my thing with LFR is though is the re the reason your DPS is bad in LFR is first off you have a minimum item level you need to reach. Which, usually that minimum item level for whatever LFR section you're running is fine. You are just bad at the game. And, I'm gonna be honest, there is no excuse for being bad at World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. There really isn't. Like, if you don't know the fight, fine, you'll learn it. You know, but like not knowing. But how if you to... can't play your class, if you don't know how to tank, if you don't know how to heal, if you don't know what spells to use, which isn't fucking hard. I mean, you can go read up on it, and there's videos on YouTube. I mean, the game. Especially, Look, Final it, it's, I might as well uh, give a shout out to this guy, a guy named uh, Mike Preacher, who makes yeah, probably dude, that dude's the videos are best. Awesome. He, he makes the best class tutorials I have ever seen. If you need help, if you play World of Warcraft and you need help on a particular class or spec, go look up Mike Preach on the YouTube and just watch his shit. And even if you don't... And I promise you, you will get better. And even though you don't know anything, um, read the button descriptions. Because every, every class kind of has a rotation. And at least, mm -hmm. or at least in the case of Final Fantasy XIV, they give you the simplest rotation. Okay, which is usually it consists of three attacks... So and it would highlight for you which button to push next to con to continue your combo hit. Yeah. Wow. That's easy. That's, yeah. That's that's now. Wow. I mean, I actually did encounter this level thirty one dragoon who actually did not know that, and but they were nice enough and they were eager to learn. So I told them, okay, so tr at least try these three basic moves in this order. And guess what? Our damage went up. But you don't see that very much in Final Fantasy XIV. What you usually see is people being undergeared, trying to get their best weapon as quickly as possible without having to farm up a billion myth points, which is like justice points. So they just want to get the relic. So they kind of go into, they charge into things undergeared. So that's that. That's usually a source of low DPS. That or our composition is a bit whacked. Like. Um, Sometimes you need single I single target damage, but you have too many mages, so you don't get many. So you have too many like black majors or something like that, or AOE type of DPS, so you don't have much singular power. Mm -hmm. So that becomes an issue. So usually the cause is composition or under gear in FF14. Like I, you know, I think I look at LFR and I'm just like, you know, 
I, I mean, for a mage, I, I look at the Frost Mage rotation. I look at the hardest rotations in WoW. And, okay, yeah, I could uh, maybe understand some of the harder rotations having a, a little trouble. But even then, you should still be doing enough DPS for LFR. You know, like, that's... I mean, yeah, easy. Like a, ma- like, a mage is dirt simple. Like I mean, it is... Throw up your dot. Is it Living Bomb or Tempest or whatever one you picked out of the three? Okay. As I as I said, and you quoted me on this, Bronson. It's it's fucking easy mode. Yeah, it's range DPS easy mode. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, like the least you, the least you could do is like read the description, like read the description of all the skills you have. Like some of them would because some of them could say this move ties to this move. Which it's, usually gives an incentive to combo it together. Yeah, which... For more in, damage. In the case of WoW, that shit is really apparent because it's like, oh man, there's this glowing fucking icon on my screen. Maybe I should use that ability. You know, it, oh, it's yeah, glowing. Yeah, what this butt does. Or yeah. like whenever whenever you have a certain ability proc, like say for example, you're a death knight, your, you know, your blood boil will, put, will highlight every time Crimson Scourge is up. I Which mean, is same thing. With, you know, same goes for a mage. Like, oh, okay, your your uh, God, what uh, ice lance is up. You, you get, you know, you get a you get to you know cast that or uh, what's another one, or you get a free cast of this or like. There's so many different ones. Uh, you know, like mage in particular is super easy, and it always has been. I remember in Wrath, the rotation for a mage was like three spells. Yeah, like, it was just, like, in Wrath, any idiot could play a mage. And be good at it. And be good. Which is why Jeremy never impressed me. He was like, like, oh, man, I'm a mage, and I do all this uber DPS. Oh, I remember that. It's like, yeah, dude, I can knock out, like, what was what was the good amount of... It what was, was a good amount of DPS at that time? It was like, what, 30,000? No, that was yeah, like I 10K. Knock, it was like 10K. I can knock out 10,000 DPS, and I'm like, you're a fucking mage. Shut up. Yeah, like yeah. Well, when you're a mage, like I remember, he, like I remember he had some crazy numbers. Like I, like yeah, it was impressive. Same, but like you're a mage. But if, if you, you're not god, if you spec your mage right and uh, and you play the rotation perfectly, yeah, you're going to be some of the best DPS in the game. You want to know who I was really impressed by though? Uh, I know you never played WoW with him. You remember Chimpy, right? Yeah, I remember Chimpy. Him and I played WoW together during Cataclysm when I was running Firelands. Oh, shit. Yeah, he did so much DPS, he pulled aggro off of me. What? Yeah, uh, he you was... see. <laughs> and he was a Which shaman. Class was he? Oh, no shit. No shit. <laughs> I was. It was amazing. It was like. Oh enhancement my... or uh, enhancement or elemental? I forgot. I forgot what spec, but oh my god. I was like. We were doing Zulamon. And we got to, uh, it was that Firehawk boss. Yep. And just, it was nuts, dude. I mean, like, like he would just pull threat off me constantly. I'm like, dude, you're going to have to, like, slow down the DPS a little bit. Because, you need to calm your tits, Chimpy. Yeah, like, this is, otherwise we're just going to keep dying. Uh, he was also the one who told me about one of my favorite add-ons. I don't use it. But man, if I ever become a guild master again, I'm making everyone install this. What is this? GTFO. Yep. Uh, for those of you who don't know what GTFO is, it is an add-on that plays the fucking death con sound when you are standing in shit that kills you. <laughs> and it's amazing. Uh, the what sound? Wah, wah, like just fucking it sounds like a siren on a submarine that's sinking. Uh huh. That noise. Oh, a wooga, a wooga. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. It is, <laughs> it is loud and ear piercing, and it's hilarious. And because of that add on, man, did I get better at tagging. Because I did not want to hear that shit. <laughs> um, and I actually really only needed it for like three bosses, and one of them in Firelands. You want to know who's a real bitch of a boss in Firelands? The final boss, Ragnaros. Like the spacing yep. for that fight was horseshit. Is not good. Like you, you have to have perfect spacing or your group dies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's always that one asshole. 
There's always that one guy. I don't think I see many AoE, people studying AoE that much in FF14 because the game kind of drills into your brain that you need to be good at it because even during normal questing, a lot of enemies do AoE, so you kind of have to get out of the way a lot. And if you're an end game and you, yeah, so you basically you're always paying attention to where these like these giant red cone things or circular AOE, and you're just having to always constantly be running out of the way out of everything, especially when you're well, a mage. So that, back in the day, it used to be that you would run, you would get quests for a dungeon, and those dungeon quests would be worth so much experience and give such good shit that you would form a group to go do that dungeon. Even when LFG came during uh, during uh, Wrath. Wrath. But the the thing is, is they have made the the dungeons with leveling so easy. Like you don't need to worry about crowd control. You don't need to re- like. I mean, it is literally just the basic of tank and spank. I did a dungeon on my unholy death night last night, and I was just like, really. This is a five man for leveling now. I mean, literally, we kill ads so fast that I can't even go through half of my rotation. And that kind of annoys me. It, it really does. does. I mean, like it's wow. still like it's still kind of okay at the lower levels, like the really lower levels when you're just learning. Like those still kind of go at a slower pace, but the but the you know, when, when you hit around the 70s, that's when it just speeds up so much. And then you have, like, those tanks who just love to pull, like, maybe six, seven, maybe even eight groups at a time. And then, you know, I, I try to be one of those tanks, but my damage output isn't good enough to keep up with the people who can land, like, hundred thousand, like 100k crits on dots. And they just pull off aggro, and it makes me look bad. Well, yeah, this is why they're doing an item squish in Warlords of Draenor. Thank God. Like this is that's the exact reason they're doing that. It's also, and I'm and one thing with Warlords of Draenor, I'm super happy about is no more reforging. Oh my God. I don't know how I feel about that. What is reforging? It, reforging so- reforging is basically where you have a piece of gear that has a stat on it that's not necessarily as important as you need it to be. So say like blood, you know, for using blood death knights for example, our core our absolute core stat next to hit and uh, expertise is mastery. Mastery increases our uh, our blood shield amount, which our blood shield is uh, created when we use every time we use death strike. So the more mastery we have, the more powerful our blood shield is. So say that I get an item that has an overabundance of hit. I'm already over my hit cap. I reforge it into mastery. I have more mastery now. Yeah, but now they just need now they just need to make items are so they don't do that shit. Like that's you know so like oh you're a hit because the thing is, they're also taking out hit and uh, expertise. I don't know so. about that either. I don't, I don't know if I like that. I'm I'm okay with that because you know they're going to think of some other cap you used to hit. Like as a tank, it used to be oh, an avoidance cap, a defense you, you cap. Yeah, be, you had. Eight, yeah, it used to be an avoidance cap. Yeah, and you, if you weren't at that an avoidance cap, you'd uh, you'd get what's called a crushing blow, which is worse than a crit. You needed you needed to be at a certain. I remember this is during Burning Crusade. You needed to be at a certain avoidance level to avoid getting critted. But if you were at that. That's like peak one. If you were at peak two, you could not get crushed. Which was fucking amazing. I Which love... was even worse than getting crit. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you needed to hit your defense cap, which I want to say, what was it? I think it was... It was like, it was like 5.3. It was like 5.3% overall avoidance. Yeah, which is like 540 defense, I want to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I... So, I mean, you always had to hit some kind of cap. It's just now you don't have to... Because here's the thing. Reforging has made getting gear work. Mm-hmm. But, like, na- like, now when you get a piece of gear, it's like, fuck, now you gotta go gem it and enchant it and reforge it. And, possibly and it's gonna, it, it, it costs a shitload of gold. Yeah, exactly. Like, just I just now, just now, got a brand new helmet from uh, Heroic Scenario. It was a 516 helmet. 
I had to spend almost 1.5k gold just getting the gems and then reforging everything. Yeah, first off, gemming is like on every server, the fucking market for that is super fucked. It's stupid. But then, like, you add in the cost of reforging, and reforging just isn't fun, and it doesn't give you that much inherent value. I'm sorry, but, like, the, the like yeah, okay, I'm hit-capped, I get a little extra mastery, but those stats, unless you're... Like, the only people who really benefit from reforging are the people doing shit on, like, the heroic modes. Like, mm-hmm. really, really benefiting from it. You know, and if they take that out and just, you know, make gear where the stats on it are fucking right... Then it's not even that much of an issue. Or, like, you know, adaptive stats that change in accordance with your spec. Yeah. Which... Like, they have they have maybe one or two adjust, adjusting stats. I mean, they've already made that for looting, because, I mean... So that only... So that, yeah, they, they've already made that for quests and whatnot. Oh. So that you... And I, I like the idea of having only one piece of gear... So it frees up space for your bags. Like I hate having to carry around my DPS set for my tank and my shaman all the time. I, I, you know, I don't even have a and DPS not to set mention, on my warrior. Farming, farming for that gear is an absolute pain in the fucking ass. Yeah, farming a second set of gear is shit. It, I hate. Does it. it does it take out Does it take out the difficulty? Yes, yes, it does. But it also takes out a lot of the headache. No, uh, like. So would you rather Would you rather have a challenge in? And actually feel like you're benefiting from it, or would you rather have an absolute, you know, like an honest to god stroke, because your rolls of the dice are not good? Well, yeah, I mean, I love the fact that they added the uh, in LFR and in regular raids the second chance at getting gear. Yeah, uh, that I mean, is so great. You know, yeah, you you have to go nine farm times daily. That second chance, that second chance is still gold. Yeah, but even then, like, first off, drop rates in these games have always been shit, but that's how, that's how they keep you playing more. Right. You know, so so they're, they're not just, they're not just going to throw shit at you, but it would be nice to, for once, get that thing that you've been, you know, trying to farm for for weeks at a time. Yeah. For well, example, a weapon. I need well, a weapon. I need a weapon. Reminds me of Master Chief. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but, no, like, the thing that... So they originally added badge gear, which has become point gear. Uh, it's some transmog gear. Well, yeah, that but, too. Yeah, but the reason they added badge gear is because of that in Burning Crusade is because that same reason. It's like, okay, you've run this boss a billion times. Your pants aren't dropping. Here's a set of pants that you can buy with badges because you've done this like a billion times. Um, which I don't know. I liked that. I think it was a good idea. It definitely made. It like, and in Wrath of the Lich King, they find, in my opinion, Wrath of the Lich King was the best catch up option for gearing because yes, because catching up in Burning Crusade was nearly fucking impossible. Mm-hmm. St- straight up, like it just wasn't going to you know. Like I remember, I was in a guild who did car. Like we started raiding in the last year of the expansion, and we managed to get really far, but like we were the exception. And, you know, most people said, yeah, like, if you didn't get in Kara when Kara was still relevant, then you weren't going to raid for that expansion. You were going absolutely nowhere. Yeah, so... That was it, end of the list. Yeah, but the way Wrath did it is like, okay, the previous tier, you can buy that gear with these points you get from Heroics and whatnot, and that'll make it so you can catch up to the current tier. Like meanwhile, that's... meanwhile, the people who already have that gear already progressed. Yeah, our, our, but our, but but of course they're complaining that oh well shit we spent months getting this shit and now you could buy it motherfucker you earned it you have it that's yours now the people who are coming back they have a chance to catch up yeah and they can actually and start raiding and experience content because that's what the developers are trying to do now they're trying to make sure they yeah they're kind of pushing you along but say if you're no longer a hardcore raider like you know. I am no longer a hardcore raider. Never mind. I stopped I'm, in Firelands. That's when I was done. I'm a casual raider now, which, you know, it kind of sucks. But at the exact same time, I have a chance to catch up and see this content before it's no longer relevant. Yeah, and it's and LFR and Flex are still fun. Mm-hmm. And, and it's still a... 
that the option, you know, like the option is still there for those who want to enjoy the mortality experience. Like I don't have time to be a raider. I don't. I you know I got I look for work. I got TGA to deal with. I got fucking you know I have social commitments to uphold. Like yeah. they, like just becoming a you know like if I worked a standard nine to five and you know didn't have TGA and you know and then you know so you have your job and you're looking for work I have my job which is a six thirty to sometimes even twelve at night sort of deal turning wrenches not to mention I have twenty four hour staff duty and command of quarters duty. And, you know, all these details that I am obligated to perform, I just don't have time. I wish I had I wish I had more time, like, say, if a four day weekend rolls around and we get out early enough like today, which was an absolute miracle that the unit let us out at the time that they promised so that I can run at normal Siege of Orgrimmar or Flex Siege of Orgrimmar or whatever, you know, comes out of that point. And, you know, actually experience content, get gear, and move forward before, you know, the next expansion and all the new shit comes out. Exactly. And it's a smart move on the developers, but all us, you know, all of us veteran players are getting really butthurt. I'm not even mad. For stupid reasons. Like, I'm not. The the only reason I could. The only reason why. Part of me is like, well, this kind of sucks because there's no challenge anymore. And the other part of me is like, well, this is fucking fantastic. Well, there's challenge because, yeah. like, that's what heroic is for. That's what regular 25 man is for. Right. If, if you want that challenge, it's still there. And the you gear. You just gotta is, get to it. Yeah, and the people who, like, and they come like, well, they're getting epics. Like, the epics aren't as good. You know, like, just, they aren't. Back to the yeah, matter. Yeah, like, the only reason I could think of as to why they would not be very happy is just all this work I put in. Someone else could just wait a little bit and be almost be at the same point as me. I don't feel special anymore. I but, put in all this work to be special. But, but the thing no is, though, it like, is... That's, that, that's one way... The, the, but the thing that's, is, though, is by the, the that is part of the problem, but then I think, like, well, yeah, you were special, but you were going to become more special than them again because they are going to be running the content that you beat already, or they're going to be running the easier version of the content where the rewards aren't as good. So, you know, in that case, it's just, like, I don't see the reason that anyone should be upset by this, especially what they're doing with Warlords. Like, I look at the way Warlords is set up, and I'm like, how could you be upset at this? They have literally made it so that there is nothing to complain about. The the game... Uh, Hang on, What, what are they doing with Warlords when it comes to gear? Okay, so... This is I, I did not hear anything about this. So I'm they're keeping the current system, on, but this is the way it's going. Uh, LFR is staying the same. Yeah. Then Flex is going to become harder, and it's going to become the new normal mode. Nice. So, so now normal mode is anything from 10 players to 25 players. and Nice. And it scales. And then, that is so cool. And then heroic mode becomes mythic, and it goes from twenty-five man to twenty man, or twenty to twenty-five man. It goes tw- no, it goes from twenty-five. You like now heroic mode is twenty-five players. Yeah. Well, now it's gonna be twenty. No shit. Yeah, they're getting rid of ten man heroic altogether. Nice. So that's fucking fantastic. Yeah, for sure. They're also making it so heirlooms are account bound. Uh, awesome. Toys are account bound. Uh, that's see. that's actually really nice that they're making heirlooms account bound because uh, trying to farm for heirlooms on other characters on other servers sucks. It does. I agree with so, that. Uh, yeah, that that makes me happy. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I like. Another thing is obviously that we're getting the new character models, hip hip which hooray. look fucking phenomenal. They look great. They do. They look great for a game this old. Yeah. And I can't like the humans look great. The undead looks great. The dwarves look great. The orcs look fucking awesome. I cannot wait to see what. And the worgens already look great. 
They're well, already they're already I, I a think, high poly. I think wargans I think wargans and goblins are not getting an update. Like that. no, they don't need it. They don't yeah, need it. They're they're, they're they're already they have a little their their pol, their polygonal count is a, like a little bit less than what the Pandaren are now. Yeah. But they look fine. And obviously I the cannot Pandaren wait, are game. I cannot wait to see what the Draenei and the Blood Elves get updated into. Uh, yeah, I'm also curious. They're one I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to. Uh, I want to see human male because they only show a female. Uh, yeah, they they have only shown the human female, haven't they? Uh, I also want to see uh, night elves. Night elves should look fucking awesome. Uh, I'm really curious how Gareth. There's a lot of stuff that I expect him to work. Uh, Anthony, what is there any patch news for Final Fantasy going on? Like, what's the next big content for you guys? We've been talking uh, a lot. Of, wow, <laughs> we got we got to move on. Well, it's totally fine to I'm talk about it because all am. okay. Well, here's the thing: all three of us have played WoW, so it makes an easy common ground for discussion. Whereas Final Fantasy XIV, I'm the only guy in this group right now that has played it, so therefore it's hard for well, me to well, talk actually, about it. Well, actually, I ha- I have played I played Final Fantasy XIV as well, but I feel like I wasted my money because it's not fun. Uh, it depends. Oh, leveling, oh, okay. It, leveling it, is an absolute bitch. I hated it. It depends. Okay, I'm talking about a realm reborn. Yeah, you did. Uh-huh. That's what you yes. talked about. Oh. Yeah, I did not like it. Because and I, I really only like bought it, it, and I only bought it because there were a couple of guys in my unit that are playing it, and by the time I bought it, they're like, "Oh, well, we moved on." Well, it kind of really. We're not playing it anymore. Do you? Do you play JRPGs in general? Because I kind of feel like this game is kind of one of those. Um, it, yeah, I think I think that was the problem. Is yeah, because here's the thing. Because here's the because the thing I noticed about Final Fantasy is that it clicks with people like me. Because I'm like, gee, I really like the gameplay of World of Warcraft, but I just don't click with its art style or its music or its presentation very much. Hey, Final Fantasy XIV Realm Reborn. It plays a lot like Warcraft with a few differences, but it it is Final Fantasy, and that clicked with me really well. So, you know. it's... Yeah, I think that I think that was a problem. I'm not gonna go out and say that Final Fantasy XIV sucks because it doesn't. I think it's, it is a yeah. very it is an incredibly well made game and it looks great. I don't know about the I don't know about the PS3 version though. I played the console ver- uh, the P- the PC version because you know. Yeah. There's a PS4 I, version coming. Why? I don't because it's not PS3 because, because and it reasons look better. Right, whatever. Like, it doesn't PS3 matter. version is kind of like the we can barely run this thing on the on the PS3 system, um, and the PC version looks pretty good. So why not let's just put it to the PS4? But I, I, like I said, I'm not going to go out on a limb and say that Final Fantasy 14 sucks. It I doesn't. Know. It's a great it's a great game for what it is, but it's not for me. I, I know it's like it's a lot like how Warcraft isn't really for me either. I mean, I played it. It's because like, it was like because it was like yeah. the only good thing. That I could think of that everyone else was playing at the time, but it, for me it was just like the gameplay in World of Warcraft is extremely respectable. I totally understand the point of this game. However, I can't click into it. There is no way that I have. I, there was literally no incentive for me to play this game for more than one month at a time. Which and, is going to be really interesting because I've told. I'm not sure I told you this yet, Quinn. I, I am buying, and if I can get some people to help me if I'm too broke at the time, uh, getting Anthony Warlords of Draenor so he can play it with us when it comes out. All right. The thing is, yeah, like, I think it's a matter of preference. Because Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn was kind of the, we have to fix this colossal calamity of a disaster that is XIV Original. Mm. So... Um, how do you fix it? I remember it? that. Well, yeah, like, how do you fix it? Well, well, let's take inspiration from many different games. Like, it just needs to work and be good. It doesn't have to be revolutionary or innovative. It just needs to work. So that's why the game... Like, if you played World of Warcraft, you can adjust to 14 really easily. You just have to get used to a few different changes. You really can. Yeah, it's it's pretty much like that. It's, just how, it's, like, it's almost like Warcraft with a different face, except with some... Things that may or may not appeal to you or not. You want to know it's a game that's really like WoW? DCOU. Uh, and that's actually a really good game. Like, a lot of people. See first online? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, like, you guys should definitely check out DCOU. I don't know, we should all go play EverQuest. Wouldn't one. that be DCUO? Yeah, sorry. Fuck. <laughs> uh, you know what? No, DCOU sounds better, though. It does. 
DC it's online like, universe. It's like it's like that a, sounds like a huge online. It sounds like a universe. That or sounds it could be huge. the acronym for like a DC universe college or some shit. Online university. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Holy shit. All right. DC All online right. university. What the hell? <laughs> All right. I'm going to mute my mic uh, for a second, guys. You can carry on. Uh, um, yeah. So, yeah, that's why I'm not really talking about Final Fantasy 14 is because it's like, well, it, we all talk about Warcraft here because we all played it. We all kind of had long experience. Of, like, I didn't really click with it, but I still played it for that's many, so... many, many hours and did put through the effort of getting 100 to level 90 in Pandaria and uh, got an alt, uh, alternate character up to uh, level 80. So I clearly spent a huge amount of time. And I spent and I played it a lot during the Cataclysm days. Uh, I, I did uh, I did the I did uh I know I did LFR, but I still saw the whole Deathwing dies scene and so so like we have common ground there. It's just Final Fantasy fourteen. It's just we don't really have common ground because Bronson, you haven't played it. Quinn doesn't like it. It doesn't click with Quinn, and I'm the only one who plays it a lot. And even then, I can't really talk much about it because it, everything I say sounds exactly like Warcraft. So there's almost no point. I so th- this is one thing I am saying is I I think that that I know Mark is playing right now, uh, and I know that and he's going to make an alliance character soon, and Quinn and I are playing. Uh, now would be a good time to return. I know I usually only, especially right now, I'm unemployed or sem- I guess it would be semi-employed. Uh, uh, it would be a perfect time because, uh, and that is because I now because with my old job I couldn't play at the same hours as you because we had totally different hours. Oh yeah, because it was Definitely. like oh, it's like I ha- I have the schedule of Batman. Where I, where I wake up at dusk and go to my job, and fucking you you get home at that time. So yeah, well, we could barely find common ground to do meetings. Yeah, it's... <laughs> imagine playing MMOs. That would be like impossible, really. I mean, yeah, it's like, like it's like you were living in Europe because. Uh, It'd be kind of funny because um, in FF14 we used to have this guild member who was from uh, who's from who's from Switzerland, and he was really cool. But you know he eventually left the guild because he wanted to do endgame content, and so he needed to find people in the same time, same general time zone, and that kind of stuff. So you know he left the guild. Um, but it would be like 5 p.m. Where I where for like five PM on the West Coast and for him it would be like two in the morning, three in the morning. <laughs> exactly, because I I would get home, depending on if I had overtime or not, between ten and one in the morning. Uh, or not not ten in the morning, but ten in the at night or one in the morning. And you would get home at five in the afternoon ish. So you know, like just totally different schedules. Like I am, like I am right in the middle of my shift as you get home. <laughs> well, so. Yeah, we didn't have much common ground except uh, Tuesday nights, I think. Yeah, like no, it was Tuesday and Wednesday night. Speaking of yeah. which, uh, I know we have which happens to, which happens to sit in the middle of a college week. <laughs> yeah. So uh, speaking of which. Uh, uh, tomorrow, can we bump our recording to, like, 5 in the afternoon? Wow. Yeah, uh, I have an interview, and I also have to go take my mom to a doctor's appointment, and, yeah, so... Sure. I guess. A random to talk about on the podcast, but, yeah, we were talking about scheduling, and I was reminded, oh, shit. I well, until Quinn it. gets back, it's just going to be kind of be like, huh? Yeah. How much I MMO things I want to say just yet? Uh, I'm looking forward to when you come back with Warlords. It's going to be fun. I don't know if I am coming back. But I, am, I just don't care. If I buy you a copy of that game, you are coming back for at least a month. It assumes what time that game comes out. That is true. I'm sorry, there is no way for me to play that game if I got a bunch of college projects lining up. Like last, like last November, when everything on the site stalled, yeah, kind of that was partly the reason. 
Well, just getting swamped is is not gonna. Like that's probably why I didn't play Pandaria at the same rate as everyone was because I got the I got the expansion a bit later, but that shouldn't be a big deal. But at the same time, it was like I'm in the middle of college right now. Things have gotten busy. I need I can't play this game. Oh, Pandaria! Came so out I just so I so I just kind of like hit ninety and stopped. Pandaria came out at the like, best possible time to me. My mom got a newer, high higher paying job, and I was uh, unemployed. So it was one of those things where I I just had all the time in the world to just fucking play WoW. Um, and then I got employed at GameStop, which might as well be unemployment. Um, seriously, like, I have, I have friends who work at GameStop uh, part-time, and somehow they pay their bills, and I don't know how the fuck they do it. You were uh, considered seasonal, though. Yeah, I know. But even like even like they, even with twenty hours a week, that like unless you have hella roommates, which most of them do, so yeah, that makes sense. Um, oh god, I don't know. A, I, so I actually have some friends who've been playing Final Fantasy XI. I'm like, why? Why would you do this? But uh, well, because like, he has like five expansion packs, so you somehow get into it. You have a lot to do. Like, yeah. a lot, a lot to do. Whereas in 14, I've actually kind of reached the point where I am starting... Like, I'm not that super hardcore into Endgame. I only play, like, mm, two or three hours a day now. So that's not really what you consider full-time job. That's, like, quarter time right there. So, and even then, I've kind of reached the point where, aside from the hardest of the hardest content, um, One Heart Dungeon and a... And, uh the first two turns of this end game raid that's very difficult. Other than that, there isn't much else for me to do. Uh, I could do crafting and mining, but that stuff bores the hell out of me. Yeah, I, okay. I agree. Okay, so mining in Final Fantasy XIV is actually, I think, more fun than uh, Warcraft because, uh, first off, it plays music for you while you're... Well, actually, no, it doesn't. That's when you're doing this or doing those leave quests things to farm of your experience. Um, it's a little more interesting because in Warcraft, the problem is is that you and whoever else is in that zone is competing for the ores, yes. which can make for an ultra tedious experience. And ever since they started doing cross realm, that got worse because it used to be, oh man, I'm the only guy in this area mining the ore. Man, I'm going to make some money and level up my backsmith. But then the moment they do cross arm, now I'm competing against people on other servers to get this stuff. Especially when the uh, when the farming guide suggests 120 of them. It, I... was, it, was, it was just brutal. Like, I'm just like, yes, I should have done it. I should have done this all this mining stuff far earlier so it doesn't feel as excruciating, but still. So in Final Fantasy XIV, people can't jack each other's ores. You just kind of have your own little spots marked on the map. And in addition to that, you're not flying around because there is no such thing as flying mounts because everything is just kind of into different loadable zones instead of one I, giant overworld. I, I remember... That actually kind of irritates me if that was a thing where you all the zones have to load separately. I mean, yeah, they have, all the zones are kind of their own sections. It's not like a colossal one piece, three piece overworld as it is with uh, Warcraft. So you get a better looking game in the process, but at the same time, you don't get quite the same vast area to walk on. I'm, so I'm doing Siege of Orgrimmar uh, right now, and we just wiped on like two percent. Yeah, like I've had, had, I've had those, health I've had left. This, yeah, I've seen those moments before. All right, a lot, we have, actually, we have two stacks of retard strength. <laughs> Yeehaw! Uh, no, man, I remember. Uh, oh god, the game pities you. Yeah, like just <laughs> I don't know how. You, and first off, I can't even leave this siege group because we're on the boss who has my shield. And I'm not giving up a chance at that fucking shield. Um, oh, God. This, this, the anger, it flows through me. Yeah. Um, no, I... 
I don't know. I you know I think that uh, I don't know what MMO it should be. I'm kind of leaning towards DC Universe Online, but you and like everyone we know should get into one game all at the same time. <sighs> And probably and preferably a free to play one. Machine gun keyboard has returned. <laughs> now nah, it's just my desktop keyboard this time. It's just kind of click click but it has really nice buttons. So click click clack 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 clack. Yeah, I'm playing FF14 right now because it totally fits in with our multitasking, multitasking, playing MMOs while talking about MMOs. Uh, yeah, yeah I, gonna... I need I needed to send off a message because I had the game minimized for a little bit, and I'm like, oh crap, I missed something. Yeah, no, I'm I'm in the middle of a LFR siege of Orgrimmar, wing one. Okay. Um, I cannot believe how bad we are. This fight is literally the hokey pokey. <laughs> I don't know how to, I don't know how to feel about um, about uh, the retard buff. Because I kind of feel like it takes some of the whole the group uh, working problems out to succeed, and instead it now becomes, oh, let's not try and fix anything. Eventually, we're gonna suck enough that we're just gonna get enough retard buff to win. The thing so, is, though, so it, it, it's get just the like retard buff in the first place. Your group has to just blow. Like, you need to wipe, like, 20 times before it gives it to you. Yeah, but then and, at that point, you would rather look for another group rather than trying to talk to people and reason with them well, why they well, need to well, fix Well, yeah, problems. by that point, normally bad people leave or you kick them. But, you know, some bad people are persistent, and you are on a boss, like the one I am on now, and you don't want to, and you, you know, don't want to give up your chance at, you know, a great... Piece, you know, like the piece you need, and quite frankly, LFR isn't exactly. Oh, let's work out the problem anyway. It's more like here are the fight mechanics. This is baby mode. If you can't do this, you are literally a two-year-old. Uh, mm. So. Oh man, I can't multitask. And we're back. Yeah, uh, Quinn what, is back. What was going Sorry. on? Well. Uh, more what? unit cohesion stuff. A uh, t-shirt patrol. Yeah. Okay. Now, now they brought the sergeant major in, which I'm like, fucking really? Well. Just leave me alone. Shit. All right. Well, I just our my my siege of Orgrimmar group just wiped on the shot of pride when he had like 40k health left. What? Yeah. A fucking execute could have had him. Well, uh, well, there was only two people left, and he got the one that wasn't the healer. Ah, uh, jeez. So, do to do to do to do. I'm gonna be <sighs> honest. I really hope my shield drops from this fucker. See, for uh, me, I've just accepted that uh, drops for my tank in particular don't happen. That's how my mage is. My because mage. I, I just, I've just accepted it because it's like, look, if you are a summoner or a dragoon in FF14, you're pretty much set because, you know, books and lances drop all the flipping time. So it's like freaking, you're going to win the lottery a lot. But if, but if you're a paladin, from what I've seen, you're kind of out of luck. So it's just one of those. Difficulties. <sighs> yeah, I'm currently in the process of doing daily so I can get more lesser charms of good fortune so I can build more seals. Fun. I love how the Shaw of Pride is a literally a boss fight version of the Hokey Pokey. You know what? Holy shit, it really is. Yeah. You put your left foot in, yeah, you put your left foot, left foot out. out. <laughs> you stab the giant demon god monster in and the eye. And then you shake it all about. Uh, you avoid the giant laser of imminent fucking death. That's what it's all about. And then you wipe. 
because your croup is bad, like this one. We've got two. <laughs> we've got two stacks of retard strength. Two strack, two stacks of determination. Yeah, you see, in FF14, I don't think that's ever going to happen because. Uh... Oh, you, oh, you because, want you want it to get easier? No, never. No, you have to find some better people, be with some friends, um, because otherwise, it, because let's be honest here, to beat Titan was like one of those. Yes. Hell it's like, yes. It's like beating, it's like beating Ragnaros for the first time. Remember that? Oh, dude, rad! Just fucking the ventrilo the vent explodes. exploded. Beating really any see, yeah, end see, bosses that way. Whenever you have a, um, oh, I need to send an emote. I remember, like, I, like I have a, I have a video on my YouTube channel where uh, for our Lich King fight, mm -hmm. and there's no, there's no music over. You just hear all of it. There was supposed to be music over it, but that never worked. But yeah, you hear everything, the entire, you know, event conversation and everything. And then once the Lich King finally dies. Just the reaction to it is, you know... The real irony... I will of, never forget that. You know what was the irony of my first ever Lich King kill? It what? was in a pug. Ooh, yeah, this was a guild kill. Yeah, it was It was in a fucking pug. I, like, I told my guild members, guys, like, uh, so guys, uh, I pugged the Lich King, so we really need to get our shit together. <laughs> and we ended up downing him like two weeks before the expansion ended. I've actually never uh, finished Ruby Sanctum either. Ruby uh, Sanctum is not that. It's it's no. It's nothing special. I know, like, but for some reason that shit was so difficult when it came out. Oh shit! Hokey pokey time. Uh, <laughs> put your left foot in. Put your left foot out. Right foot out. I mean, it's a cool mechanic. What's a, what's a good song for the? Uh, let's see. How do I describe the Titan hard mode fight? Yakety shacks. Yeah. Just because that song, you, because you that. have, because what happens is that there is a lot and lot of AOE going on, and the DPS and the um, and the healers have to run and dodge these AOEs instantly, or else they risk either getting blown off the stage or uh, definitely Yakety sacks. Benny yeah, Hill. like healers, that, 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 healers that is, don't dude. even think about finishing your heals. Survival is more important. Get out now. You know, that was that, a really that's, hard... That's how short the that, AoE warning That is. reminds me of Defile on the Lich King fight. Yep. So, for those, Anthony, the, on the Lich King fight, in Phase 2, it had this mechanic where one person would get cast Defile on them, and they would have to move away from the rest of the group, and if they didn't, it would spread to everyone else. It would else. just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and then cover the entire flat platform, and it killed you in, like, Two seconds? Yeah, it was pretty much just instant death. And then there's always the guy who gets to file, and then he's taken off, and he gets targeted by a Valkyrie and gets dragged away. But it'll glitch, so it'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. That was annoying. Uh, another one was uh, when you would is when defile and a Valkyrie happen. Like you said, they would happen at the same time. Oh my god, that shit was so annoying. Uh, Val in my opinion, Valkyries were a bullshit part of that fight. Yep. That was a really cheap bullshit tactic that they did to make that fight hard. Um, because... You know, but, you know what? It worked. It worked. I'm not saying... But I, no one liked it. It was like, wow, you could not think of anything better. That's uh, irritating. Uh, Illidan was a rad fight. I thought Illidan yep. was great. Illidan's cool. Uh, supposedly he might be back in this next expansion. Well, I I don't know. They did say that they were going to do it. Not only that, but like with the new Warlock quest line, there is proof that he is alive. So, oh shit, you know what? That's right. Yeah. That's right. I remember that. So, there you go. Man, I miss class specific quests. Hey, I'm guess surprised. what? Final I'm Fantasy XIV has that, and it's cool. Some well, it depends sometimes too, actually, but it's cool. I'm surprised during Cataclysm because it revolves so much around the elements and shit that you know shamans didn't get their shining moment, which they should have. Like they should have gotten like a set of armor that they build throughout the entire expansion. Paladin's shining moment was wrath. That was their big fucking. 
Like that that entire expansion was just like, are you a paladin? We yeah. Love, we love you. Oh. Oh my god, if I open this chest and my shield doesn't drop, I'm going to flip my shit. All right. Gold and gold. God fucking damn it. So, oh my god. All right, you well, think I fell after running a free hard mode like 50 times and never seen my sword? You just kind of accept it and, you know, you're just like, oh, the sword's not going to drop anyways, and if it drops, cool. Yeah, but like... Just, this... I mean, I've just learned to deal with it because it's like, you know what, everyone talks about how I've ran a crappy sword, but do you know what? I've adapted. I am probably a good tank because I have managed to keep aggro with a crappy sword while everyone else has these ridiculous relic weapons that do incredible damage and they can't get aggro off of me. Genius. So it was like one of those m few moments of, um, yeah, I managed. It's cool. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guarantee you, if I were to go run an old dungeon right now, like a nightmare of Sheik's ear, I would guarantee you'd fucking get a shield. Which you probably I, would. And and the funny part about it is, I would actually kind of be okay with that because I, I need a shield. It, it's somebody. better than what you got. Yeah, it works. Um, it's, granted, there are three shields in the Siege of Orgrimmar, and I have gotten zero of them. Like, that is nuts to me. But the question, which, que the, the question is, which one do you actually absolutely need? Which one is best in slot? Well, they're all, they're all fine. They're all equivalent to each other, so. Oh, it, well. It's, they're all tanking shields. It's, the, the one I like the aesthetics most is the one that drops off General Nazgrim. Hang on. Let me look this one up real quick. But of course, and of course, my uh, my dungeon journal won't let me choose the bosses. It's it's kind of glitched, I think. Yeah. But, uh, uh, fun little story. I forgot that I did um, Scroll of Resurrection with Aaron right before Pandaria came out. So I logged onto my Battle Not Dead account, and I've got a Spectral Griffin. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, right, that happened last year. Cool. So, happy free mount time. Oh, man. Mounts. 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 <sighs> Actually, in this game, which was kind of like a nice little feature, so obviously the standard mount for any Final Fantasy game is a chocobo. So obviously yeah. you pretty much get your chocobo at about level 30. And uh, whenever you ride your chocobo, the chocobo's music plays. And after about mm, hearing it for like six billion times, because you always ride your chocobo if you want to get somewhere a little more quickly, you eventually just go into the options and just shut up the mount music. I'm going to be honest. After a while in these games, if I'm like farming enough, like no matter how good the music is in these games, you are going to get tired of it eventually because you just hear it so much. Yeah, but the mm -hmm. chocobo song is like... I mean, there's some songs I wouldn't, I will never get tired of as long as they let, as long as I keep listening to it. Oh, but the, but the chocobo, you. Mm. But the chocobo one was like, okay, that's it. I'm tired of hearing the chocobo theme. Well, I've heard it in every Final Fantasy game. Just so I, I so, but thankfully they give you the option to shut up, shut it up. So yeah. I used to love the molten core music, mm -hmm. but then after hearing it for three months on end. <laughs> the da 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 I was I, I was very much like, okay, I'm gonna turn like, sound I'm somebody... gonna turn sound off and I'm gonna go into uh go on to iTunes and play my own music. Um like if it wasn't very repetitive, like if the song is like freaking six minutes long and it's not very repetitive, I'm actually okay with it. But when you have something like the Chocobo song, which isn't exactly that long and all you keep hearing is da 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 Yeah, yeah, it just freaking oh. I think one song <laughs> the one song for me that never really got old, no matter how many times I heard it, was the um I think it was the uh the Karabor, the Karabor music for Black Temple. Go oh, look dude. at go look it up on YouTube. It's just so it, it's so awesome. I like the Magi Magister's Terrace music. Yep. That's uh, I like Elwyn uh, Forest. Elwyn Forest is good. It's so, beautiful. I love it. This is good. this is a bit off topic, but I just popped onto my internet browser and saw a picture of realistic Zoidberg, 
and it was the most frightening thing I've ever seen. You just now saw that. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it on Tickled. Oh, Jesus. You've been posting a lot of shit from that website recently. Yeah, well, it's because I... Yeah, I, you know, I get sent stuff from it, and then I like it, so I post it. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh, I should move us on to questions and news. I haven't even... Actually, I oh. never talked about the FF14 news thingy. Uh, okay. The thing is, is that... Um, the next big patch for Final Fantasy XIV or Reborn is patch 2.2. It's coming out, I think, in March. Um, unfortunately, not many details about it, though. Uh, so one of the things is that that five-turn super hard raid uh, coil of Bahamut, that is now going to be put into the Duty Finder, which is another way of saying Dungeon Finder. Which uh -huh. is great for me, because now I'm like, go oh, good! I don't have to go around asking people to form a group. Uh, because that's just one of the things I'm not very good at, because I'm not a very social person, it makes it hard for me to form groups. And it's also hard for me to join groups, because in the Party Finder, everyone is constantly saying, know the fight, be experienced. Like, they all say that. It's like trying to find a job. It just kind of sucks. You're just oh, not qualified yeah. 90% oh, of the time. <laughs> I have the real life version of that heroic. Yeah, like for me, dick. it's like, for me, it's like, I'm good at what I do, but at this particular thing, they always keep asking for experience, which I don't know if it is because of A, they actually are running it like a fifth time and just want to get through it quickly, or B, they just don't, I haven't passed it before and they're just saying experience so that way they don't have to, so they deal with fewer bad people. I don't know. But anyways, I'm going to put the coil behind it through, or at least some turns of it, into the duty finder, which is great, because now I can just have the computer decide who I team up with, which could be a terrible thing, knowing how random groups just function too easily. I don't know. Right. Um, other things, maybe one or two new dungeons. I uh, don't know their names, don't know what they are, but hey, kind of expected. And... Um, that's all I know of. Oh, and they're adding even more turns to the coil, which, you know, should guarantee even more frustrating runs. Because oh. you need something to keep the 0.1% happy. I, I forgot to mention this to Quinn, because Quinn hasn't studied much stuff on Warlords of Draenor yet. Uh, hey, Quinn. Only, yeah. Do you remember Leroy? Yes, who doesn't remember Leroy? How would you like to do heroic? What if I told you there's going to be a heroic upper black rock spire? No! Yes. No! Yes. That is awesome! That's Holy awesome. Holy shit! That is awesome and horrifying all at the same time. I know! God damn it! Um. <clears throat> and I hope, they may, I hope they actually make it as hard as... As what Upper Black Sp Upper Black Rock Spire was. I mean, I hope they make it fucking stupid. I want them to make it stupid. <laughs> Just put, more, so. put more eggs in the room. You know, put more eggs in the room. Make the whelps hit like a fucking truck. You know, actually have us re re actually have the players use their crowd control abilities and not just bullshit. <laughs> To be fair, to do that room successfully, all you had to do is out of your raid walk in this one path, and you yep. could pass by all of it. God, how, what? of course, there's always that guy. There's always that guy. Or just like people didn't know at first, so just like they kept trying to run the room, and there's really they, no they just way to do those it. Eggs were like a piece of scenery. Oh no, shit! They actually were. They're actually hatching. Fuck. Oh, uh, or or. I mean <laughs> I remember progression through that place, and it was like, oh, man, this is really awesome, da 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 da, -da. And you get to that room, and just, like, people spend, like, a week trying to figure that out, and then someone, you know, finally I have seen I have seen guilds disband over that one fucking room. It, it, was, it was funny. I'm, I'm like, seriously, guys? There's Wait, what? It, yeah. I have seen entire guilds disband over that one fucking room in black rock spire that's terrible right speaking it's of funny. which i remember that one time when uh i think the three of us are actually in a group and we ran through black rock spire and brother's like okay so we need to get anthony the leadboard title okay everyone 
stay here. And then Bronson ran into the room and got every single egg, and I was a hunter, so I'm like, hmm, man, this should be this should make for some fun in DPS numbers. Bronson comes by, I'm like, trap, multi-shot. So, you know, this hunter can somehow shoot 100 arrows at the same time, instantaneously, into these little whelps. And, hot. Uh, He's Hawkeye. And, and it got the <laughs> an outrageously high number. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, I... Uh, so uh, I have a couple of news stories and whatnot. Uh, yeah. And, <sighs> are you done? Or are you still going? Yeah, I don't know much about Patch Two Point Two. I mean, it's still a little early. I mean, the, they did have a ask the producer. That's one of the cool things that FF Fourteen did and what the producer did because the producer of um, A Realm Reborn, he was part of the team that made the original Fourteen. So ah. he had the weight. He and his team had the weight on their shoulders of fixing the mess. So when he became producer, one of the things that he did to try and connect with players better and to, you know, heal bad wounds was to, you know, stay connected. So just like, ask me anything kind of things and, you know, giving everybody updates. So he didn't give See, much. That's what that's what developers need to do for games like these. To be fair, the, the Warcraft's been doing that for a while. Uh, Ghost Crawler, before he left, did that all the time. We got oh. constant blogs. Yeah. You just need to go on the website. But in this case, it was probably he probably had to do it partly out of necessity because... Out of guilt? Out of guilt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the right word. I wouldn't say necessity, but out of guilt for being a part of the colossal mess that was the original 14. That was so, the original Final Fantasy 14. I remember uh, that. That was a terrible launch. I thought about Holy playing it shit. until I... Look, 2010 was not a good time for Final Fantasy. 13 nope. came out, people were extremely disappointed in it, then 14 came out and became the worst main series title in history. Oh. Freaking 50 so, out of 100, no economy, completely broken gameplay, servers didn't work, just... Horrible. It was just flat out horrible, and it was so, just... And those were really dark days for the Final Fantasy franchise, because... So, I, yeah, no, I like the only. I love how you put that, Anthony. They were dark days. It really Final was. Fantasy you think franchise. about it. You think about it. Like, what did Square Enix have back then? I mean, what did the franchise had left? Final Fantasy VII remake wasn't happening. Thirteen Verses was in complete limbo at that point. You know, being developed by the one man working on it. They said and, they were working on a Final Fantasy X remake, which yeah. is coming out four years later. Thirteen was a disappointment. Fourteen was completely terrible. So they're remaking they're remaking ten, but they're not remaking seven. Well, you know what? Someone at Square Enix granted my wish, and that's all that really matters here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're going to make a Final Fantasy VII remake until the day they are I very hope desperate. They don't. I hope they don't. I, I yeah. I just want to keep have them keep delaying it to piss people off. I don't even care if it ever comes up. Like, I don't even, like, I like Final Fantasy VII. It's not better than ten or six, which are the best two. Uh, but, man. All right. So we got news and questions. First piece of news is from Eve Online. Ooh, and, I don't know much about Eve. None of us play it. Uh, yeah, well, so Eve Online kind of has corporations and it, and all this other crazy stuff, and you can convert the currency in that game to real-world money. And the biggest battle in the game's history happened because someone didn't pay the rent, basically. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's awesome! Oh, EVE Online just has these amazing stories that just happen nowhere else because of the way it's set up. Like, Aaron told uh, Bronson and I the one time this one dude did this giant corporation and successfully pulled off a Ponzi scheme yep. and just robbed people of so much money. All right. It so, blew, that was like, wow, that's possible. All right. So the, the headline for the news story was this 21 hour battle uh, for BR5 RB resulted in more than 11 trillion ISK in damage. All thanks to a lapsed bill by one important user in EVE Online. In, in, in U.S. dollars, that would be three over $300,000. No shit. Yeah. Wow. Uh, to put this in a little more... <laughs> I fucking love this game. I could never play it because yeah, I'm boring as hell. 
but man, like the, the just the crazy shit that goes outside inside it. It is makes fantastic. the best. It makes the best stories. Even uh, though you know if you were involved in it, it's terrible. But it makes the best stories for everyone else. They really do. Uh, let's see. But continuing forward, uh, it was the largest battle in the game's history. Uh, and and usually, like if one or two dreadnoughts go down, or the or titans, uh, it's it's pretty big deal. Like the biggest battle up to this point, twelve titans went down. During Ooh. during this, fifty nine titans for one side of the conflict. All because of rent. Oh. Yeah, all because of a. That's the bill. biggest thing here. Can all you imagine? Of, I don't know. I don't know what a fucking Titan class warship like, is. Or was this like a case of someone didn't pay the rent and someone got really angry and therefore this gigantic twenty one hour fight, which costed three hundred thousand U S dollars, happened? All right, well, well, yes. All right. This. All right. So this is what it says. All this over a bill. Yes, this particular bill was very important. It was a sovereignty bill for a system called BR-5RB. There are thousands of systems in EVE Online, each controlled by a variety of warring factions. But BRRB was controlled by Alliance Pandemic Legion and Manny Leans, uh, Leeds Pandemic Legion. Uh, the system that we were talking about was one of the staging, their staging system. Staging systems are used to coordinate and launch ships. Thousands of players could be operating out of one during an important mission. Despite being set in the future, paying bills is still a pain in the ass in EVE Online. Players refer to the interface for such matters as sucking chest wound. Made him forget, oh. forget about the bill... In his mind, it was paid. The interface seemed to reflect the payment he moved on. Two other members of Pound Demon Demic Legion even checked, but the bill, uh, whether through oversight or glitch, wasn't paid, and it was owed to the Concord EVE Online NPC police force. When the bill went unpaid, that territory was no longer in their control, and it was up for grabs. Ooh. And that's how it started. Wow. All because of a glitch. And it is known as what is it is known as the Halloween War, an ongoing clash between N three, uh, the Drone Russian Federation, uh, and the CFC Clusterfuck Coalition. <laughs> is it is it bad that I have absolutely no idea what the hell we're talking about? No, it, it's Eve Online. Someone didn't pay the rent. The land became open, and everyone fought for it. I, mean, I, I get that. I get that. But I've never played Eve Online. I don't know who these factions are. I don't know what the hell. So I do believe, like you start with a ship. These are player factions. Like all these are player alliances. These are guilds. And yeah, shit. these are guilds that combine together to make one big faction. That is cool as fuck. So, uh, like the Russians are. Uh, a couple of different factions that all have Those down. Those Yep. Like, uh, N3 is a coalition between Northern Coalition, Nolis, Noli Sakuda, and the Nexus Fleet. No shit. Uh, so, anyway, uh, we don't come around, we don't fuck around when it comes to sovereign wars, said Alex. Uh, the reason people don't like fighting us is because we are a very well-oiled machine. Uh, the Mantini is one of EVE Online's most notorious figures. He was behind some of the infamously alcohol-fueled remarks towards another player in 2012. Uh, the game, let's see, they banned him for 30 days and started to re-sign from the player-run council going by as the player's development. I'm trying to find, I read something else that was crazy here. It just seemed nuts. Um, yeah, so basically this caused a change of hands of land and now, uh, and now one fa one of these factions owns just a massive chunk of the galaxy that they didn't own beforehand. Ooh, uh, nice. If if you want more, uh, you really want to understand this fucking madness. It's called go on Giant Bomb. It's a and look under news. And the article is called the unpaid bill that launched a thousand starships. <laughs> uh, Can you imagine? Like I don't want to think about what's going to happen. If that happened in the real world, because Dude, if you think about it, scary but, to think like, about. well, because well, the thing is, is that's not going to happen in the real world because it's not like countries pay rent 
to uh, a world overlord yet. Yet. Yes. But uh, if it, that did happen, can you imagine? It's like now you're going to start throwing in nuclear weapons into the equation. Because, you know, land is that important. Because it's not like today where just about every piece of land has been claimed by somebody. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Wow. Uh, just oh, like, Evil uh, Online just comes it, up with the. just has the best stories. Because, like, you talk about Final Fantasy XIV and World of Warcraft, the best stories are usually, uh, we beat the Lich King, or we beat Garuda Extreme Mode. And then you hear stuff like Evil Online, where an unpaid bill sparks a 300000 US dollar repair bill. Uh, uh, in addition to, like, freaking. It's unbelievable. So, I have one last little piece of the story is, uh,. I, let's see what faction here won. It, it was the, but uh, the clusterfuck coalition apparently won out. Uh, and let's see, uh, he gave you know they stay up all night and eventually they overtook him. But Manny and he said, yeah, we could have crushed them, but May didn't do that. Now is the N three is the one going into hiding, according to their spies. It will take months for N three to recover. Uh, he doesn't intend to squander this opportunity, but he won't crush N3. And say he plans to take the three regions from N3 and hand them over to the Russians. I've communicated with the enemy leaders and told them that I'm going to take three regions from them, and then I'm going to let them live. We're going to take three reg regions and then give them the finger and then fuck off. That's the price they pay for coming after us in Fountain. Both sides expect this to lead to small periods of peace with EVE Online, at least as peaceful as a game like EVE ever becomes. Inevitably, there will be more conflict at the way of the game. I never wanted to conquer half the galaxy, but whatever. I'm rolling with it. <laughs> I feel like I am hearing a news story about the first Galaxy Wars. Like right? the gal like you know, like World War One. It, like it, it seems War it, it seems like people who play Eve Online are like those kind of people who they are like truly politicians. Don't give a fuck. No, like, they yeah. truly don't give a fuck. The way they those quotes they sound like a mix between politicians and military leaders. Yep, our spies. Wow. They have there, spies. There are that, spies. That, that, that's like, like that's fucking spies. awesome. Look, corporations are such a big deal. They have spies. It's like real world espionage. Over a fucking video game. How cool yeah. is that? Look, this is a video game that costs like 300,000 US dollars of ship damage. Virtual ship damage. Alright, so, good for Eve. Dude, dear goodness, Eve just has like the best news stories. Alright, so, uh, the next news story is because it's Warcraft's uh, upcom the upcoming 20th anniversary at the end of the year, uh, hey. they, they released a little stat sheet here for uh, stuff that has gone on in WoW over the years. Um, so, I guess I'll pull up the little thing they've released here. So, WoW's lifetime players, not accounts, but different players who have played the game, is at 100 million. Ooh. Including Trials. Uh, there's, this does include Trials, and it is the population of Germany, Belarus, and Sweden combined. Ooh. Uh, World of Warcraft is played in 244 countries and territories across the globe, including Antarctica, Bahama, the Bahamas, the Christmas Island, and I can't even read that last one. Uh, so, Antarctica. So some guy on an Antarctic research mission decided to chill and chill some more and play Warcraft. Ah, uh, I see what you did there. Uh, that, was, uh, that, was, that was unintentional. It's like so he decided to just chill and just play more Warcraft. I'm like, wait, hang on, it's Antarctica. He's already chilling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was unintentional. <laughs> it's also it's also Antarctica. Where the fuck do you get internet? Satellite. Easy. Satellite yep. internet. I mean it's probably really slow uh, though, yeah. because satellites internet, well, it's really expensive and it's probably not that fast considering you have to talk to satellite. Like the raid lag must be astronomical. He mm. must just quest. That's all he must do. Or crafting. Yeah. Or gathering. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Something like that. Oh. That's something about that spiel. So fantastic. That is, that is fantastic. That puts a smile on my face. Uh, anyway, Azeroth has been home to millions of heroes since the, fir the r first realms went live in 2004. And 52% of it is Alliance. 47% of it is Horde. 
One percent of it is neutral Pandaren who hasn't picked yet. One <laughs> percent. Okay. Well, the most widely used titles are The Patient. Yeah, that one's easy to get, actually. Jenkins. That one's also easy to get, and everyone loves the internet. <laughs> and Assistant Professor. I see that one a lot, too. How do, you, how do you get Assistant Professor? I don't know how to get that one. Does anyone it's know? Gotta be, it's got to be through Alchemy or some shit. I, I, because that's a reference to the YouTube videos, Assistant Professor Evil. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, you need to find a rare artifact in archaeology. Ah. Uh. So, all right. Um, moving forward. Nine million guilds have been created. Nuts. Of the 11 million Pandaren... 1.3 million of them are females with foxtails. Hmm. hmm. Mine is not. Of the 500 million characters, there have been 500 million characters created in WoW. Nice. That's bigger than the population of the U.S. Yep. Mm-hmm. They, they even compared it right here. 316 million is the population of the U.S. Wow. Uh, it's not just about smiting foes and looting gold. World of Warcraft has an epic storyline and a rich, detailed world to explore. Uh-huh. It has uh-huh. sure they always say that, but all that, but all people ever cared about is where their epic boots will happen. Well, it has 100 pages of content, and World of Warcraft is subject to the biggest video game wiki in the world. World worlds. Uh, WoW story has grown with each expansion. The in-game text is around 6 million words, which is the equivalent of 12 copies of Lord of the Rings. That's nuts. To more, let's see, sound. There are 3,900 minutes of sound, which would take 44 audio CDs to hold all the music and sound effects in World of Warcraft. That's nuts. You're going to hear that from me throughout this entire thing because, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. It's 10 oh. years old. You can amass huge numbers like that easily. <sighs> yes, you can. Uh, let's see. So the rarest mountain in the game is the Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent. The rarest pet is the Tiny Red Carp. The most common pet is a squirrel. Yeah. There are 504 unique mounts. 619 unique pets. Uh, let's see. Uh, 900,000 PvE instances have been run. Dungeons, raids, or scenarios. Nine, 900,000? Yes. Oh. Oh, wait, that's every day. The oh. average day in Azeroth is 900,000. I was like, 900,000? That doesn't sound like a lot in 10 years. But every yeah. day, holy Piss. 3.6 million pet battles a day. Uh, I've never done one yet. 670 PvP instances. Fuck PvP and everything around it. Challenges. Uh, so the total number of challenge modes have been 504,000 for bronze, 332 for silver, 162 for gold. And every day, 11 million achievement points are earned. Mm. Wow. Uh, let's see. So, every day, 2.8 million gold is traded on the auction house, which is two times the amount of eBay on Cyber Monday. Wow. 71 auctioneers in Azeroth equates to 39,000 transactions per auctioneer to process daily. Finally, uh... Wow's YouTube channel. Okay, that no one gives a shit about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. The level ninety elite tour and chieftain have performed three thousand in-game shows each year. That's funny. That that is pretty good. Uh, Garish has been defeated four hundred thousand times already. How much does that have to suck to be a world leader and to get beat forty thousand times, four hundred thousand times? Uh, Across uh, like, uh, let's see, what fifteen dimensions servers? Yeah. Uh, let's see. 
Okay, you were prepared, but is it truly the end for Garish? All right. No. Thank you for being. Thank you for being with us. Slash hug. See you in Draenor. You bet. Hell yes. I remember League of Legends did something uh, similar to this, except it's with quote community. Except it was really funny, and no one wanted to believe it because uh, how did Riot put it? League of Legends has a legendary community. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Then, no, it doesn't. Like, well, what they what they were trying to sit. Well, they tried to be positive and say we've got a legendary community every day. This many people talk about League of Legends on Facebook, and this many. Basically, they were giving a bunch of numbers to make it seem like it's a legendary community, but no one believed it. But it's no really one be- not. No one it's believed. It's a terrible it. community. No one believed it because yes, you have numbers. But tell me, can I randomly uh, solo queue without getting some jerk telling me how to do my job? Or nope. ultra raging over the fact that we are just losing? Like, this is kind of why I don't play the game that, anymore. That game, that game brings out the worst in people. It really does. Because the problem is, is that, um, like, in MMOs, the high is kind of important. But the problem with the MOBA is that when you win... The high is so great that you need to win again. And if you don't, you basically... You crash. You you crash crash and you look for someone to blame. And obviously you don't blame yourself unless... Because, you know, you are the all-important, omnipotent god. Yeah, so so basically you 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 get get the mentality of a... Of a... Everybody this bridge doesn't su- know how to solo top. Fuck Every- this guy. Everybody sucks Spotlight but me. <laughs> Everything you know is wrong. No. All right, so... Yeah, yeah, Like to be honest, like League of Legends is great, but it's just like I don't know many friends who actually play considering it's the world's most popular PC game, so it's like... I, I'm just kind of like this weird spot. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to stop. Um, All right, so... I got two last things here, I, or one last news story, and then two random things to close up with. Uh, what are you guys' opinions on a legendary on the legendary cloak quest line, a thing everyone can do that takes place over the course of an entire expansion? Hmm. I think it's rad. I think it's really cool. It's rad. Uh, that's kind of expansion long thing that you work on, and it get, adds another thing to it. Yeah, I, I want to do one of these for every uh, for every expansion though. So, uh, the last couple things here are, this is from Tickled, Joe Jackson, first father to successfully beat the black off his child. What? Get it? It's Michael Jackson's dad. Oh, God. (laughs) I'm going to hell. Uh, finally, so, I'm not sure if you guys, I've talked about this in the past, but I haven't talked about it in a while, I want, and I want to bring it up on this, uh show because it's kind of PC related. You access it through a PC. And it is the Tumblr This Is Why You're Fat. Oh god. Yes. Have you guys been on this website? God damn it. <laughs> it's the best. It is the best website. Anthony, have you ever been on This Is Why You're Fat? Nope. Alright, so I'm going to read you some of the dishes from This Is Why You're Fat. I kind of feel like this kind of thing is going to rot my brain. This, this is going to you, this is going to hurt. <laughs> this is going to hurt your mind, your soul, and your stomach. The Cowboy Cafe Barnyard. Oh my God! Two half pound beef patties, <laughs> pulled pork, barbecued bacon, two slices of cheddar cheese, and a fried egg, all on a burger, and a diet coke. <laughs> and a diet coke. Maybe it's right. best to make me hungry towards the end. <laughs> this, this is the end of the show, so... Well, I do have some, like, a small news story, or a few, uh, couple very small ones. All right, well, fine, we'll go back to this when you're done with those. Go. Okay, so, uh, I think I talked about this on the Gamecast, or last week's raid, but hey, for those who actually like the music of Final Fantasy XIV, they're having a Blu-ray soundtrack, Blu-ray disc soundtrack coming out soon. Cost $50, you can pre-order it, chips in April... Um, has all the music in Final Fantasy XIV, including patch 2.1. Exciting stuff. Now, you need a Blu-ray player, so if you don't have a PS3 or PS4 or Xbox One or any way to extract the music, 
you're kind of out of luck. But, uh, yeah, exciting stuff. Second news, small event. Final Fantasy XIV likes to do a lot of small events. It's Valentine's! So they put lots of hearts everywhere and Yay. tell you to dress in Yay. red. Tell you to dress in red. Uh, WoW does the same thing. The event is called Love is in the Air. I mean, yeah. So... Also, the Dark Moon they, Fair is going on right now as well. Also, so. they yep. brought back the. Uh, they brought Use back your words. They brought back the Lightning Returns event. They did it a, a few months ago to promote Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII, and they're doing it again because the game's coming out soon. All right, great. Monorail. Uh, Monorail. Monorail. <laughs> Monorail. 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 <laughs> Monorail. 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 <laughs> Monorail returns. Final Fuck hallway, it. the 13th. Fucking A. Only God be- damn, that launch. That was... <laughs> or, no, that announcement that was like... Premiere was that when was Bronson bad. Tells me, when Bronson tells me, I'm like, <laughs> they really get that? Like, they talk about, Final Fantasy is so well established. Look, we're in the modern era. Here's the classic era, the golden years, and the modern era. Because we don't want to call the modern era the, the disappointment era. <laughs> so we're going to call it the modern era, and then we're going to bring in the monorail. And I just kind of thought to myself, didn't you start Final Fantasy thirteen riding a monorail underground to the underground? <sighs> All right. So next news story. It's kind of a kick-ass monorail now that I remember it. Yeah, that's all I have, really. It's just those two small things. All right. Well, um, okay, so we're all aware of the Lombardi, the Lom- ugh, Lombardi Trophy in football. Uh, the the well, Vince how Lombardi would, Trophy, yes. How would you feel about a Vince Lombardi Trophy made out of Rice Krispie Treat? What? It would look weird. It would. It does look weird. It's gigantic, too. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The Mountain Harbor Inn Brownie Stack. Three balls of vanilla ice cream atop a four-inch thick brownie covered in hot fudge sauce, whipped cream, and topped with a cherry. The cherry is the healthiest part of that entire... What the fuck, man? Alright, uh, all right. Here's, here's a quality one for you guys. Bacon-wrapped Totina pizza rolls. Why am I listening to this? <laughs> that's hilarious. Be, be, because because the, the masses demand entertainment. Uh, and we are providing. So, let's see. I'm going to try <laughs> if I can find it. Uh, let's see. I want to find one that you could like actually eat that it is insane, but still totally dumb at the same time. Cause I some of, Duncan for, uh, for fucking... Uh, Thanksgiving. I those are fucking an, delicious. An honest to God for Duncan. Her ducking is amazing. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna find the. Oh, here we go. The double coronary burger. Oh, the classic one. Here we go. A burger. This, this is this is the burger that started this entire Tumblr page. Uh, no, this isn't. But this is still amazing. Oh wait, I thought it was. No, a burger topped with five slices of bacon, four slices of cheese. Two fried eggs, mayo, lettuce, tomato, onion, between two grilled cheese sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's fantastic. Can you read that one more time, please? <laughs> Alright, sure. <laughs> I spaced out, okay? I had to type a message. <laughs> the double coronary burger. Okay. A, a burger topped with five slices of bacon... Four slices of cheese, two fried eggs, mayo, lettuce, tomato, and onion. And instead of buns, they used grilled cheese sandwiches. Take out the veggies and that would be like, oh, wow. That would be amazing. Wow. Yes. Yes. All and... right, man, somebody to make this. Oh, here's another one for you guys. The Smorio. Oh, no. No, 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 no. All right. Take apart an Oreo cookie. Put ice cream and a piece of a Hershey's chocolate bar. Put it back together. Eat it. (laughs) It's ridiculous. This is fantastic. I'm I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going until I find one that just is the showstopper. Uh, Oh, here we go. This isn't the showstopper. That was quick. Oh, <laughs> the snack Kano. Oh, 
Orange no. soda, strawberry ice cream float topped with Skittles. Oh. oh, this one. This one might be it. I'm going to try and find someone else, but this one's pretty good. The Smortuary. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I, I what love- the fuck? These names are fantastic. Yeah, I'll give them credit for that. <laughs> At least. I mean, shit, these guys really know how to come up with a very appealing name for these things. The guys who, like, must own this Tumblr page must, like, they must be, like, five of me. I mean, Jesus. In addition right. to that, they must be really good chefs. Because they take, yeah, they take pictures. Because it's like, because it, because it just because it's like anybody can come up with any recipe to like throw in lots of unhealthy food together, but to make it sound delicious and think that it will taste delicious, you need to be a pretty good cook. All right, like, so, I imagine like actual people who cook <laughs> did this. Right, one just... layer of marshmallows, a layer of Reese's peanut butter cups, another layer of marshmallows, sandwiched between two s'mores pop tarts. Topped in chocolate sauce. I think I just got cancer just from listening <laughs> to that. <Yeah. laughs> Not cancer, diabetes. <laughs> cancer yeah, that was, that was Yeah, like, diet like, cancer. I cancer posted this on Facebook yesterday. Got a herpes if a flu. And, and it was and it was uh, cookie dough. What, three words: cookie dough Oreos. One word: diabetes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, I need uh, to start planning my visits to ER if I even think about taking a bite out of those. Oh, my God. Okay, that one. Oh, man, they don't have the ingredients list for that. That does look interesting, though. It's called a cupcake kebab. It's, oh, it's, my God. It's it's a kebab, yes! but it's cupcakes. Yes. That sounds pretty great. All right, so you guys are familiar with the Baconator, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's just like it's just a burger with nothing but patties and bacon and from cheese. Wendy's and cheese from Wendy's, right? Oh, would you, you, know, you know the stuff that makes all any health activist group just flip out. Well, and how the old mayonnaise? The old mayonnaise. Yeah, exactly. If you're a bitch, anyway. <laughs> Fucking yeah. god damn it! Wait. Caucasian uh, Ethiopian, that motherfucker. God, that dude just. We had a friend Mitch in high school who just could eat everything. I mean, just. Like, he would eat you out of house at all. Uh, anyway, the Steakinator is two 8-ounce prime egg steaks with braised short rib, cheddar cheese, bacon, and a fried egg on a toasted cheese and garlic sourdough bun. Oh, my God. Did you just... Are your pants ruined now? Yes. All right. Uh... Let's see. I I still haven't found one that's just like just so just out there that it makes me be like, we're done here. Yep, that's it. Like we need to find one of those. Oh, that is just wrong. Especially because Burger King. All right, this one's kind of gross. It's a Whopper with seven patties. You know, at the university that I go to. Yeah. Um. In uh, one of the food cafeterias, uh, we ha- which is like the only fast food place on campus, uh, you can order a Quint burger. Okay, what is this? Well, it basically what the name oh, sounds. It's, it's basically long. it's basically like a typical burger, but it has five patties in it. And if you can somehow manage to eat this Quint burger in one in one sitting, your name gets uh, uh, put on a little wall to say this guy ate five patties congratulations so what's in it is it just meat cheese and i mean it's really it's basic a, bur- it's a regular burger with five patties dude yeah well actually you can order it however you want you can have one with no cheese like it's like usually their burgers yeah, it's just like it's this. just it's just, doing- it's just like it's just buns patties and a tomato but sometimes i ask for no tomato because i don't like veggies in my burgers so you can have just a bun and five patties and this would cost like seven or eight dollars Anthony, and and uh, in addition to that, you can add bacon for seventy-five cents. You can add mushrooms, or barbecue sauce, yep, onion rings. We're doing this. Yeah, we're doing this. We're, we're doing this. Bronson, Bronson, yeah. Anthony, an awful, awful with bacon and five patties. I'm gonna be honest. Awful, awful is it's a lot of food, but it's not particularly the best burger I've ever had. 
Oh, what are you talking about? It's still delicious. It, it's good. I, if I could get a juicy quality burger with awful, awful size, now that's what I'm talking about. An uh, awful, awful with five patties. Oh, with God. Bacon. Oh, God. Okay, I think I found the showstopper. This is huge. Oh, shit. All right. Hold on to your butts. I hope you got a sweet tooth for this one. Oh, crap. All right. A trifle's dessert whose layers from top to bottom include sugar crystals, cotton candy, Butterfinger pieces, melted caramel, Twinkies, peanut butter mousse, Rice Krispie Treats, Chocolate Syrup, Melted Candy Bar, Peppermint Cookies, Girl Scout Thin Mints, White Chocolate Pudding, Cream Horace, Melted Butterscotch, Brownies, all topped with frosting and whipped cream. And this is why you're fat. This is... <laughs> Boom! I think that is, I think we're not going to get, I'm starting to get to the point of the blog where it's like, oh my god, what is that? <laughs> okay, this is called the Sex Panther. Oh, jeez. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? <laughs> he had to get <laughs> he, he's got to whip out a pen and, pa a pen and pencil. Pen and the paper. Okay, the Sex Panther. Breaded schnitzel, bacon, cheese, ham, and steak in a hollowed-out bun. Oh, my God, this is... The Fat Bastard Burger. I think Anthony is typing all this down. Oh, man, these are really great ideas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just typing messages. Oh, man, I'm just... <laughs> I'm gonna take all these when I guess when we're all done. All right, the fat bastard burger, triple beef, triple bacon, triple cheese, and caramelized onions. Not good enough. But, yeah, after some of these, that one's you know not good enough. Like after telling you about the Quint burger that's in the, like the one well, the cafeterias at my school, <laughs> it's like. Uh... Yeah, you can order Quint burger, and because uh, it's not a, it's not like. It's like a food company in contract with the university, so you get lower food rates. So Anthony, it's actually, so it's actually kind of inexpensive to eat there. All right, Anthony, you, you have you have eaten the Widowmaker. I have. Well, now you need to eat the new middle Widowmaker. You mean the Quint? With no, this, no, this is this is this this what I'm about to read you is the the Widowmaker. One and a half pounds of ground beef. One package of bacon. One package of Italian sausage. A box of Hot Pockets. <laughs> How does anybody eat that? Oh, I'm not done. Half a package of fried onion strips. Between, and this is sandwiched between two tombstone pepperoni pizzas. Topped with Velve Velveeta cheese and marinara sauce. I'm sorry, a box of what? A box of, a box of hot pockets. <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Anthony, can we cut this portion of the podcast out and have it no. as a separate video? Nope. Nope. And, no, Anthony. Anthony, you know what? No, Anthony. I want. I am. I am the. I know Nick is the EIC, but I want this to happen. I want this part of the podcast cut out and just put as a video feature called "This Is Why You're Fat." Yes, <laughs> do it. Oh, that's now. Okay, that's now. Gamecraft of the Gamer Accents presents. This is why you're fat. <laughs> <laughs> Have me do that voiceover. Have me do it. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, Bronson, let's be quiet so that we can, can read it now. Go. And now, Gamecraft of the GamerAccess.com presents This is Why You're Fat. Okay. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's great. The British voice acting always makes everything more classy. Okay. Actually, I think it's very funny that a British you know man is telling know. Americans why. I can do it a hell of a lot better than that. Let's redo it. Okay. 
And now, Gamecraft of the Gamer Access presents This is Why You're Fat. Okay, hey, yeah. I'll clap. <laughs> All right, here we go. Chili cheese corn dog fries. Hot dog sliced into strips, then battered and deep fried and topped with chili and cheese. That actually sounds kind of good. Like, it hasn't been like the last couple where it's just awful. Especially that last one. A box of hot dogs. It's just... Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. All right. I'm, I'm... Oh, my God. All right. A lot of the really good ones are... Okay, I got two. I got two. The dessert lasagna. Oh my god! <laughs> but wow. I don't like. But I don't like lasagna. Well, this doesn't sacrilege. Layers of Oreos, graham crackers, and ice cream, <laughs> chocolate and peanut butter chips, drizzled with chocolate syrup. What? The fat cocoa. Oh my god. Cheese steaks with mozzarella sticks and french fries on, on top of rolls. Can we just stop now? Alright. Can Please. I get one? Like, just uh, hearing this is get, starting to give me a heart attack. Alright. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, gotta, I gotta do the closing voiceover. I gotta do the voiceover. Wait, 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 hold on. Hold on. I wanna find one more one like that Hot Pocket one. There has to be another... <laughs> that Hot Pocket one was just hilarious. It's like uh, a box of hot pockets. <laughs> a box like, of hot pockets. I'm just like, oh, you mean like that stuff they always advertised way back in the late 90s okay. that you can microwave. Okay, this isn't my last one, but this is actually kind of cool. An Oreo cupcake with built-in milk in the cup. What? Ooh. Like it's a hollowed out cupcake, and then like you put milk in the middle and can dunk Oreos in it. That's that's cool as fuck. That is, that is super rad. Um... Oh, man, that actually... Okay, let's see. All right, th this this one, I think, has the potential, but I'm going to look a little longer. Ew, a hamburger helper pizza. Ew. Ugh. Why? We stop talking about food. I'm Why? Hungry. Uh, this has been another reading of oh, this. Here we go. Fat. Here we go. Here we go. The toe bias. Toe bias. Oh, God. A grilled beef sandwich topped with fried pepperoni, salami, provolone cheese, steak, fried onions, tomato, and special sauce and chips. And Holy ch shit. You know what? I've actually ate every single one of those ingredients before. I'm just like... In one sandwich? No, not one sandwich, but like separately. Like I've had like when I was a poor I would order like the parvolone and roast beef. So oh, yeah, you know, so like, like all so I know all the flavors separately. So, it, so it's it, just like it, trying it, to match them all together is like. Whoa! Well, if you eat all those, I found our winner. I found it. This is this is this is the. Winner. This is the one. This is the one. This is the this, showstopper. This, this Please, is the showstopper. Like... Just because of the name alone, even. The magical rainbow tower of dreams. This Wait, just what? sounds amazing. It sounds, like, it sounds like some awesome Kirby epic chocolate journey. The magical or, or a Peaky Pie dessert. The ma yeah, that Brony Bro Fist. Bro Fist, brother. Uh, magical rainbow tower of dreams. Ten layers of molt Anthony. Write this down. A Anthony, stop typing for a minute. <laughs> All right. Magical Rainbow Tower of Dreams. Ooh. Ten layers of multicolored chocolate chip sponge cake, each separated with a layer of icing. Oh, my God. This is like the ultimate party cake. <laughs> like I said, it's, it, it's a Pinkie Pie creation. All right, so this is this is this. And is, you know what? She works at a bakery. She can fucking do it. This is this is the plan, gents. This is the plan. We're gonna make that hot pocket pizza thing, and we're gonna make this, and we're gonna and 
after PAX, we're just gonna have a giant fucking hotel party. That we have to we have to record all of them. Yes. Yeah, it I'm is not... a necessity. It is an absolute necessity that we fucking record this shit. Alright, so I Anthony, we have just created a new show on accident. So and, uh, and I have provided the intro voiceover and I want to do the outro voiceover. So all if right. you would like you would allow me. Alright, go ahead and do it. Go. This has been another rendition of This Is Why You're Fat. All right. Yeah, so they, we need. I think, I think we, we need. need to do, I think we need to do a disclaimer as well. Yeah, like we basically took the title off of uh, the actual Tumblr uh, page. Yeah. This uh, is why so, so yeah. So it, the problem is that I also have to get like some video footage so that way it just gets everyone's heart to stop uh-huh. just watching this stuff. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm sitting here and I feel like, man, not only am I getting hungry, but I feel like I'm going to die soon just hearing all this. <laughs> this is I, think, I think I have cancer a bot, beatings. Like, freaking, what was it? Like, a, uh, like two eight ounce steaks with a package of hot pockets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know. Why, I don't know why it's so funny. Just when you say a package, what a po- with a package of hot pockets. I just don't. Oh god! This is so uh, funny hearing. Oh god! Uh, can, can this podcast, this particular part of this podcast, has to go on our day of games highlight video? It has to. Uh, A box of hot pockets. Oh god! So sheer and utter ridiculousness. I can't. Uh, wa- I can't wait to have to pitch Nick this show. By the way, it's like, oh Nick, it's we just gonna to- be like a one-off. Yeah, we, because we, at this we point, accidentally we, created a new segment. Well, it's not. Well, it's just a one-off. Um, it's a lot like a fifteen-minute access of the Pizza Hut app. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> like Pizza Hut app, totally not related to gaming, but uh, hey, fifteen minutes of us talking about pizzas and how stupid speaking it was. Speaking of pizzas, speaking of pizzas, there just recently, yesterday actually, we had a Papa John's open on post. Huh. And it is the only Papa John's in Fairbanks. Ooh. Oh. On a military installation. So, man. Yeah. Oh, wait, no. No, it's not the only one in Fairbanks. There's another one that's like fucking 12 miles out. I know Peyton Manning owns multiple Papa John's in the Denver area. That's all I know about it, really. So. And then we have a Papa Murphy's next to a Fred Myers. You guys have Fred Myers up there? Yeah. Huh. I think we, we, have, have a, we also have a Walmart and a Sabs Club. Oh, well, yeah, those are everywhere, though. Yeah, true. Well, but, you know, it's not just Fred Myers. We have, like, three Fred Myers up here. What I love is, like, driving through a small town, and it's nothing but really small houses and then a Walmart. No, not necessarily. It's like Reno, but smaller, and not a whole lot of big buildings. No, no, I, I am saying that I enjoy that experience of, like, tr- driving across America... And you get in this town, and it's like six, like it's like ten houses, uh, one local business, and then a Walmart. And you know that just that Walmart just killed the economy there, and everyone there works at that Walmart to buy stuff from that Walmart. They took good jobs. Ironically, yes. And you know what's really shitty? Like in Reno, none of the WalMarts are hiring. Yeah, I have checked. I am not below working at Walmart. 9.5% unemployment kind of tends to do that. Yeah. Because right. what do What's people, do? What do, people do when you can't find a job? You kind of go lower and lower and lower. And lower. And yeah. Walmart well, is towards the bottom. As far as yeah. Uh, Started from the bottom, and we're still here. <laughs> I fucking hate that song, because that motherfucker started out as a child actor. He was nowhere near the bottom. Yeah, wait, who sang that song? Drake. Oh, that motherfucker fuck was, Yeah, that motherfucker was on Fuck Dick him. Ass. Like, uh, you know, if if Eminem came out and did, you know, start from the bottom, I'd be like, "Okay, yeah, motherfucker, you lived in a house like mine." I understand. Yep. But you know, motherfucking Drake appearing on Degrassi. Like, no motherfucker, you ugh. 
you, just... you started so... on Degrassi. Now, granted, it's still it's still kind of low because it's fucking Degrassi, but still. Yeah, you 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 started in the upper middle class, and now you're at the top. Yeah. So yeah, um, you know, progress. We, prob- we probably should conclude this episode since we're not talking about anything right now. We're yeah. Just kind of bullshit, which is. Hey, I'm fine with bullshitting. Yeah, we yeah. need to have you on uh, the Gamecast because that—that's a show that we can talk about whatever the fuck we want. Pretty much. Um, uh, welcome uh, to the second game? episode of This Is Why You're Fat. <laughs> Hello. I can imagine. I mean, to the it's second like, episode of this. I can. I'm pretty sure. I feel like someone has already done this on YouTube, but I'm not sure. You know the song uh, "This Is Why I'm Hot." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, this, this is, is why, why I'm fat. fat. This is why I'm fat. <laughs> yeah. We could do and there, was, there was like a SpongeBob um, music video set to that song way back in the day. I think it might oh have been taken down now, but it was really pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, and the well, few things on YouTube I actually watched. All right, well let's close. You want to you want to see some absolute comedy gold on YouTube? Uh, there's a couple of cracked articles about this shit, but go look up Der Schlangemann. Oh, as long as we're talking about, so we should. Add, this is actually something MMO related to YouTube. Everyone, go to YouTube if you like MMOs and go watch a machinima called Chronicle of the Annoying Quest. Yes, God damn it, they need to start bringing up more episodes. Still, they said they were bringing it back, but we haven't heard any updates since like September. Yeah, so. I think there was a Kickstarter revolving around it as well, which I donated like two hundred bucks to. So, hopefully, that dream happens. Hopefully, because that is a great series. It for is. The amount, for, the, for the budget that they were working on, it is a great fucking series. Oh, yeah, it's an amazing series, and I was super bummed to think that like it wasn't going to finish, but now that yeah. they're actually going to finish it, hell yeah. Eventually, at some yeah. point. So, um, this has been Bronson Fiore, your level 90 human prop warrior. Anthony Tell, your level 50 Ellison Paladin. And Quinn Kressler, your level 90 Dranai Blood Death Knight. All right. See of you. Awesomeness. Of awesomeness. All right. See you whenever we feel the itch to record this again. Which may be never because we'd be sued. <laughs> Maybe. We don't I know. think. Uh, and well, this is why you're fat. This is why you're fat. This is this why you're fat. This it, is. It, 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 this is why you're fat. This is fat. This is why you're fat. Anthony, is the recorder stopped now? <laughs> no, <laughs> we're still going. We're still going. Okay, I'll stop it now. Now.